Hi, right, Shalom. This is Jeebus Holland, back in the highways and byways. Before we start off, we want to give all praises, glory, and the highest honor to Yahweh, Basham, Yahweh Shai, Basham, Rukal Kadash. Basham, Rukal Kadash. Our honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone. Peace and salutations to the elect out there that is spreading this word of sincerity and the truth all over the four corners of the earth. Gone once again in the highways and byways, pushing the word for Yahweh, Basham, Yahweh Shai, you know, to the elect that is scattered around the four corners of the earth. Okay? So by saying that, Spirit hit me. Let's go into that. Jake is scattered across the four corners of the earth. Give me Isaiah 11 and 11. Give me, uh, uh, let's start with um, Revelation 7. Yeah. I didn't say, hey, that's crazy, man. I think uh, you, said, you said it also this week. I can read your mind. <laughs> and, and now, I was thinking seven, but I realized that I didn't say seven, but I was thinking seven, yeah. But yeah, grab it. But that that's what it is, man. You know, the longer you're with each other, you know, you start to have that 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 same mind, man. That's why Yahweh Shai said I want you to be of one mind. What difference do? Yeah, you can pull that real quick. Philippians chapter 2 and uh, in verse 2. Fulfill ye my joy that ye be like minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Yeah, being of one accord and of one mind. That's why you often see the apostle Tom say, hey, give me that uh, scripture in Mark. You know what I want. Because he knows what he wants. Okay? That's, that's why you turn out to become one body. Okay? You start to know this uh, each other's spirit and you know what scriptures they like to go into so let's go into uh, revelation 7. yeah this is revelation chapter 7 and verse 1. and after these things i saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth holding the four winds of the earth that the wind should not blow on the earth nor on the sea nor on any tree This is the revelation. No, 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 just, uh, just uh, verse two. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living power. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to her the earth and the sea. Okay, so in the, in the process of time, I know these angels be holding back the wind, which the wind represents the destruction that is going to come upon this earth. Okay. To wipe all this stuff that you see around you to wipe it down to, to the ground, okay, with the besom of destruction, okay, which is gonna come like a wind when a nuclear missile hits, it's like a wind that pushes you in the face, man, okay. So, but that event is being held back by Yahweh Shem Shai because everything shall be done for its set appointed time, okay. Verse 3, saying, There is not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, so we have sealed the servants of our power in their foreheads. Yeah, man. So hold it back until the servants of Yahweh Shem Shai are sealed. You have your Bible? See? Matthew, give me Matthew. 24 and... Uh, I started 30. Let's go. Matthew. What? I had it. Thought I had it. Matthew chapter twenty-four, in verse uh, verse thirty, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall the tribes of the earth mourn. Started this is uh, Matthew 24 and verse 13. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. See, so when this gospel is preached across the whole earth, then shall the end come. 
because the point is elect is among, scattered amongst the four corners of the earth. You see? So the, the winds of the destruction will be held back until the elect is sealed. Okay? With a mark. Now, that is not the mark of the beast. That is the mark of exemption. Exemption from what? Destruction. Okay? They are exempt from destruction. I'll just read on in the Revelation. So, uh, Second Revelation, chapter 7, verse 4. And I heard the number of them which were sealed. They were sealed in hundred and forty and four thousand all the tribes of the children of Israel. Of all the tribes of the children of Israel. So this 144,000 is of the children of Israel. Now you have these Christians, you see, when they talk about the elect, elect, elected people, okay, during the rapture, okay, the 144,000, we know this number, it clearly says 144,000 of the children of Israel, you see? So how you break that down? Then they come and say they, uh, that they are spiritual Israelites. Nah, man, ain't no such thing as a spiritual Israelite. Revelation 9 and 1. Uh, no, no, no. Romans 9 and 1. Right here. Romans chapter 9, first month. I said the truth in press. I lie not. I say the truth in your house shy. I lie not. This is Paul speaking. Go on. My concerns. Also bearing me witness. My conscience also bearing me witness. In the Holy Ghost. In the Holy Spirit. Yeah. That I have great heaviness and cutting out sorrow in my heart. That I have a great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. Read. For I called this that myself were a cause from the house shy for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. John? Who are Israelites? Who are Israelites? So Paul was groaning in his spirit, meaning he was sorrowful, emotional, because he looks at his people and he's like, man, I could wish that I could have done such a, 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 a beautiful thing for my brethren that they could get deliverance, like what Jehovah Shai did. did. So it says, this is only for his brethren. He wants to have a, a, a grand deliverance to the brethren, to the kinsmen, which kinsmen is family. Yep, I mean. Now, Esau broke the brotherly covenant, so he is not considered family, man. Okay? Neither is Ishmael. Okay? Because that's what they these Christians want to come uh, with, too. Like, yeah, uh, isn't Esau the brother of Jacob? Isn't Ishmael the brother of Isaac? Okay, and what about the other nations then? Because you're breaking it down like salvation is for everyone, right? So what about the other nations? Huh? When it says neither Jew or Greek, you you claim to say that that means everyone can make it? No, it says Jew or Greek. So what about the Chinese person? What about the Japanese person? Huh? It says Jew or Greek. Hey. Hey. Coffee. Yeah, put the food. Yeah. Oh, he he trapped. He trapped. Yeah. Hey, hey, plus. He did Yeah. Yeah. So um, Saka, that's what Saka. he desired for his brethren. Kinsman, Saka, Saka. Saka. Yeah. Kinsman is family. And these other nations are not our family, man. Give me uh, Amos 3 and 1. And you you read on. Read on? Oh, okay. Um, who are Israelites? Who are Israelites? Exactly. That's who he desires to have salvation. Now, Paul, he was sent to the uh, uh, Gentiles, right? But here he's referring to Israelites in the book of Romans. So they. So what was? What does Esau want to claim? Yeah, uh, Paul went to the Romans, like they were uh, Edomites. No, 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 no. He was speaking to Israelites because even to them he said, "I wish that I, you know, could suffer for my people who are Israelites." So who do we think he was speaking to? 
the book of Romans, he was speaking to the men in Rome who are Israelites. Even even Paul himself is a dark, dark man. Is it, uh, Oh, right. No, they call him an Egyptian. Oh, I thought he was in a Roman. Yeah, we The precept. Romans. Acts and Romans. Okay, give me Romans. This is Romans chapter one and seven. To all that be in Rome, beloved of the Most High, God. called to be saints. Called to be saints. Now, who are the saints? Israelites. Who used to say that? Uh, high priest Ariar. I think high priest Ariar or high priest Yaikwa. Who are the Israelites? Uh, no, who are the saints? Israelites. I think high priest uh, Yaikwa used to say that in uh, Times Square in uh, New York. But the saints are Israelites, man. You see? So the, the ones that were written, was being written to the epistles of Paul towards the Romans was speaking about Israelites, man. Now you have the ex, uh, the, uh, the account where um, they had to go out of uh, Rome because of um, Claudius I Caesar, Acts 18, I think. Yeah, for 700 precept. Okay, read. Um, um, this is uh, Acts chapter 26 and um, verse 4. Let's start in verse 4. My manner of life from my youth, which was at the first among mine own nation at Jerusalem, know all the Jews which knew me from the beginning, if they would testify that after the most straightest sect of our religion, I lived the Pharisee. And now I stand and am judged for the hope of the promise made of the Most High unto our fathers. Unto well, which promise... Which the, fathers, which the, the promise that was unto the fathers is the fathers of the Israelites. Okay, the forefathers of the Israelite, Israelites, starting with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Verse 7, unto which promise... Are twelve tribes instantly serving the Most High day and night, hope to come. For which hopes sake, King Agrippa, I am accused of the Jews. You see that the hope that is towards the children of Israel. Okay, give me. Um, <laughs> finish that. <laughs> it's it's um it's sundress weather. Okay, so you know what that means, right? Brothers gonna be a little bit distracted every now and then. Well, you got to stay in the spirit. Um, finish Romans. Finish it? Yeah. Uh, Romans chapter 9, verse uh, 4. Grab Psalms 105, verse 8. To whom adoption. 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 No, no, it doesn't say adoption. It says adoption. 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 Oh, yeah. Adoption. Who presented the adoption? And the glory and the covenant. And the, so the glory pertains unto the Israelites. The adoption pertained unto the Israelites. And the, the what? Covenant. And the covenant pertained unto the Israelites. Read. And the giving of the law. And the giving of the law pertained unto the Israelites. And the service of Yahweh. And the service of Yahweh. Now what does the servant, service of Yahweh uh, represent? The protection, man. The protection, the guidance. You know, he listens to your prayers. He gives you what you have need of. That is the service of Yahweh. That is given unto the children of Israel, whom are the kinsmen and the brethren of the Apostle Paul. And the promise. And the promise. What is the promise? The kingdom. The from, from all the way back. Exactly. Abraham. Yeah, he has it. And uh, real quick, give me Romans 11. 11 and 1. Because they say, yeah, Ro uh, um, what you say? Uh, Roman that? Uh, they say Apostle Paul was uh, was a Roman, right? They say Apostle Paul was a Roman. He was a Roman citizen, but his nationality was what? Give me that. Romans eleven and one. Roman chapter eleven. And shalom one. to all the Akiam on the comment board. Yahweh Hashem Yashai broke a thumb. Okay. I say then, the Hawa cast away his people. The most has not cast away his people, man. That's that's something that these Ishmaelites, these Arabs, Muslims want to come with, man. Yeah, the most doesn't deal with Israelites, no. What are you talking about, man? Even um, in the book of um, uh, Amo, Amo, that he said, um, let me get that one. Yeah, so um, these Arabs say like um, that uh, the most has cast away 
his people because in their own book, which is the Quran, it says that the Israelites are chosen above above all people upon the planet Earth. Okay? So when we bring that out, the Surahs al-Baqarah 2 and 122. When we bring that out, we, we ask them, like, so uh, ain't you supposed to look at the Israelites as being, uh, you know, the greatest pe uh, people upon the planet Earth? No, no, because he doesn't deal with them no more. That's not the case. Because that scripture is a straight-up copy from Deuteronomy 7 and 6. You see? The most that has not cast away his people. Read on. First get the other books that we was going to tell them. It's not Romans 9 said the promise. So, so the promise is in the Psalms. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Banyamian. Yeah, of the tribe of Banyamian, man. That's right. So, <laughs> we didn't expect him to say it in the Hebrew, right? So, um, Apostle Paul is of the seed of Abraham. Okay, now this dumbass uh, dude, uh, Sam Simon, he said, like, how can Yahusha be of the seed of David? Because David didn't live in that time. But that's some stupid shit to say, man. It is, of course, speaking about his lineage because here Apostle Paul says the same thing. I'm of the seed of, of Abraham. That doesn't mean he's a straight son. That means he's of that same lineage, man. You see? It is uh, he's of the lineage of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. Banyamian, son of the right. Okay? So the Mosai has not cast away his people. Uh, Apostle Paul himself was an Israelite. Now, who are his brethren then? Who are his brethren if he himself was an Israelite? Are the Israelites, of course? Give me Amos. This is Amos chapter 3 and verse 1. It is word that the Lord Jehovah had spoken against you. O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, Okay, so the whole family. So Israel is called the family of the earth. Okay? The whole family of the earth. Church, the tribes of, uh, of, of the nation of Israel, man. Okay? That turned out to become nations. Kindreds. And amongst uh, many tongues, the nation of Israel resides up till this day. Okay? Verse 2, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. So it's not speaking about, you know, when Apostle Paul said, for my kin kinsmen, it's not speaking about other families. Man. Hey, awake. <laughs> you see? Okay, so, uh, read on. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Yeah, man. And because the Most High is dealing with us, we are being punished for our iniquities, man. That's why you see these heathens doing a lot of folly, a lot of wickedness, a lot of madness. Are they being punished? Look at what they be eating in, in China, man. Look at what they be eating in, in Thailand and in, um, in, uh, in Japan. It's a lot of madness, man. They be eating dogs, man. They be throwing live dogs in boiling hot kettles, man. Okay? Now, don't you think that the Mosa is furious because of that? Yes. Yes, he is. Okay? Because we esteem dogs even higher than these Edomites, man, at a certain point. Because we didn't e even allow these Edomites to come close uh, to our dogs, man, like it says in uh, Job, uh, Job chapter 30. Okay? So they be doing all these things, and they are not being punished for it. Now, Asap, he was meditating upon this also, like, how come that they are not being punished for their, for, their, for their deeds? But then he understood their end because he went into the sanctuary. He went to meditate, went into the scriptures, meditated towards Jehovah Hashem and then he understood, like, oh, so they will be punished in the end. So that's why the Mosai is long-suffering towards them, and, you know, he just waits until he can unleash his wrath, which that wrath, the spirit of wrath is going to come upon his men. It's going to come upon the angels, upon the Lord Jehovah Shai, because why do you think he comes down with a shout? He's going to be, hey, like, for example, um, in the movie X-Men, 
uh, uh, apocalypse apocalypto what does he do he enhances the strength of storm of um, wells not of uh, magneto because he he already looked at him he said hey he bad powerful basically that's why he didn't enhance his strength um storm and also the the angel uh, boy also uh, the girl with the with the sword with the purple sword he enhanced enhanced their strength so that is the same thing that the Lord Jehovah is going to do with us, man. Okay? With the Lord Jehovah Shai. Enhance the strength. Give him that spirit of wrath, which the Lord Jehovah Shai already has. But hey, the Most High has seen all the things that be done under the sun, man. So the Most High has a lot of anger. Okay? The Most High is furious. But these people be claiming the Most High is only love. Okay? Now they clearly didn't didn't read the acts that are uh, written throughout history, man. How the most I got very angry. Okay. Okay. The wisdom of Solomon chapter five verse seventeen. You shall take to him his jealousy for complete armor and make the creature his weapon for the revenge of his enemies. So, you know, he's gonna make us, you know. The lack is gonna turn us into weapons, man. We're gonna we're gonna hunt these heathens down, put them in chains, and put for judgment, man. That's right. That's right. Psalms. This is Psalms chapter one hundred and five, starting at verse eight. He had remembered his covenant forever, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations. Okay, so the most high remembers the promise that he made. The most high changed not. Okay. Therefore, the sons of Jacob are not consumed. Give me that lamentation tree and anything. So, so the most I made this promise. He's not going to turn back to his words. He's not going to change it all of a sudden like, yeah, I take it back. You know what? I'm still going to destroy them. No. There's a promise made, and he's going to keep his promise. Okay? That's why it's also, you can see how the most is creative. He, um... He, he told Moses, like, listen, man, I'm going to destroy these people. And I'm going to start uh, the nation again with you. He, is not, he wasn't going to do that. He just he just said it out of his anger. But he was not going to do it. Moses was like, no, no, don't do it. But the Mosai was like, ha, gotcha. Because he was not even going to do it. Because the Mosai has made a promise. Before Moses was there, he made a promise with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You see? So, yeah. This is Malachi 3 and 6. For I am the Lord Jehovah, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. See that? Because the most I doesn't change, therefore we are not consumed. Because he made a promise with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and he's going to keep it. Okay? It is ours, man. The promise, the covenant, the law, statute, commandments is ours. But guess what? Seeing that these heathens always want to have what we have, this is what this is a, a, a part of it, man. This is a part of the things that um, that they won't want to have. It's our ways, our law, such commandments. They want to be us, like the brother always says. Uh, everyone, everybody want to be a nigger, but nobody want to be a nigger. Why? They want to have our flavor, our style, our skills, but they don't literally, physically want to be us because we catch a lot of hell, man. Okay. Limitation here. Yeah. Three, 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 two. Twenty-two. Oh. Three and twenty-two. Limitation chapter three, verse twenty-two. It, it is of the Lord Howard. Mercy that we are not consumed because his comp uh, compassion fail not. Yeah, it is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because his compassion fails not. You see, so the most I keeps having compassion on his people. Okay, that's why we are not consumed. Okay. I want to uh, actually come here to... Uh, because they with you. They too. Um, like in Psalms, chapter 105, and verse 9, which covenant he made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac, and confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law, and to Israel for an everlasting covenant. Yeah, man. Israel for an everlasting covenant. It's for Israel, man. Ain't no such thing as a spiritual Israelite, man. You either are or you're not. 
because everything is according to the flesh. Okay? Now, what, what do they want to come with? Yeah, the most high doesn't look upon the outward appearance. It is not about the outward appearance. It's about your lineage. Where does your line go back to? Go, does it go back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to whom the promise was made? Or does it go back to Esau, Edom, to whom destruction was granted? You figure it out, man. We are here in the highways and byways to give you this truth. Where do you want to hear of a bear? You thinking that it's not going to happen, it's not going to change anything. Romans 3 and 3. What else? Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is uh, Psalm 130, verse 3. If thou, O Yahweh, should work iniquity, O Yahweh, who shall stand? Yeah, if the most I would look at our sins, nobody of us, us would survive, man. Nobody would, uh, uh, of us would, would, would be delivered. Now, this goes hand in hand with uh, the book of Galatians. Apostle Paul was pressing upon these men like, yo, don't think that this law that we grew up with and you didn't is going to save you. Hold on to that grace that is given by Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai because that is going to deliver you. Okay? Now, if you want to be all righteous uh, by the law and basically push Yahweh Shai to the side, you going off, man. You're going off. Righteousness doesn't come by the law. But we, they're trying to please Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai through faith to the best of our ability, we'll try our best to keep the law. But these Galatians, they was they was bugging out, man. They was bugging out because here it is, like uh, you often see it, right? Like um, uh, brothers that are not looking like Wesley Snipes. They want to be even more. They want to be oh, the ultimate Jake because they want to prove themselves. They want to be the ultimate Jake. Now, when these Galatians came into the truth and got back into their uh, nationality, they wanted to be the ultimate Jake. Oh, the law! Give me the laws! Give me the laws! I want to know how to do it to be the ultimate Jake. Calm down, man. Apostle Paul was like, calm down. You are called by faith, not by the law. So take it easy because you cannot take away the Lord Jehovah Shai because through him, you are being brought back into this truth. Without him, you wouldn't be here. You see? Just what, what just started two and then jumped to three after that because they're Gentiles, right? So when when uh, Apostle Paul was sent to the Gentiles, they those are you have to um, have that in your mind that they want to prove themselves even more. And we used to have uh, doctors in in the law, you know. Um, when it says uh, uh, Pharisees and uh, Sadducees, that means these people were these people were elders. They were learned in the law, you know. But that is not going to save you, you know. Oh. Uh, not necessarily. The Pharisees and Sadducees were just sects. Okay, mm -hmm. it split up into two uh, uh, beliefs. They believe the one believed in uh, angels and spirits and uh, sp spirituality, which are the Pharisees and the Sadducees didn't believe in that. They didn't even believe in the reincarnation. Yeah. That's why when Yahweh Shai came on the scene, he said, "And this is a hard thing to understand, but he is Elijah, which was for to come." Yahweh Shai knew already when he was on the scene. He already saw the Sadducees and, and, and Pharisees battling. Okay, so you had people that had that belief, but they were not necessarily elders or learned men. They just believed this, uh, this, um, I, I'll call that, this, um, this branch. Path. Yeah, this branch. Yeah, they was just following this branch. But amongst those Pharisees and Sadducees, yeah, you had elders, elders and uh, supposedly um, leaders of the people. That yes. led away a lot of children of Israel, man. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. So like that, because I was watching the, the video of the elders at the uh, Galatians 2. That's what they uh, explained. Men with reputation. Yeah. That's what the elders that yeah. were in the, you know, they, they knew the law of the top of their dome, you know. Yeah. They were uh, um, studied in that type of uh, way. They yeah. didn't go upon the faith because the faith wasn't given them yet. But they, the, the, everything was the law to them. Like the brother was explaining, you know. If you're a Gentile and you're you're a, a doctor in the law, then you're going to be ultimate uh, keeping hold of that. But then Apostle Paul, he tried to settle them down like, hey, faith, that's the basis. Yeah, especially in the situation that y'all are in. Because y'all didn't grow up with the commonwealth of Israel. You didn't grow up with the law of the commandments. Otherwise, it would be easy for you. 
But now you're going to uh, put burdens upon yourself. You're going to trap yourself and you're going to, you know, kind of sometimes desire to go back to those ways of the Grecians, of the Galatians, of the, of the uh, Antiochians, okay, which is Antioch or uh, Philippians. You know, these are all places, man. These are all cities and regions. You're going to kind of go back to that or want to go back there because Satan is going to come right there, man. Satan is going to come and you're going to, you know, Matter with yourself. So the Apostle Paul was like, before you put these burdens upon yourself, just know that it's all about faith, man. You cannot disannul the Lord Jehovah Shai. Okay? See? Okay, so you was going to read that or? Read um, that? I had, had two precepts I read. Okay, read the Galatians first. This is Galatians chapter 2 and verse 16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Yahweh Shai, that we might be justified by that that we might be justified by the faith of Yahweh Shai, not by the works of the law. Yeah. So that's what you want to be justified by. Justified means to be uh, called out to be innocent. Okay, which none of us is innocent. If you if the most I would judge is by the law, read it again. The Psalms 130. Yeah, the Psalms 130 verse 3. If thou, O Yahweh, shouldest mark iniquities, O Yahweh. Who shall stand? Nobody. Because everyone would have to be destroyed, uh, have to be destroyed, man, according to the law. You see? Because a lot of us committed uh, 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 iniquities, man, which iniquity is sin upon sin upon sin. Okay? The word sin is taken away. This is iniquity. You see? It is not uh, just a sin no more. It's just, it's, a, it's a, a piled up. Okay? So all of us would have to be destroyed, man. But it is all about faith. That's why the Lord said, when I when I shall come back to visit the earth, shall shall yeah shall shall you find shall I find faith upon the earth? Because that is the question: Is there gonna be faith men walking in faith for Yahweh Shai in those days, man? Because that is what it's about. Okay. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Exactly. By the works of the law shall no man be justified. Like yeah, I know my faith ain't all that, but you know how, how good I was keeping the law, right? Try and say that before the judgment seat of the Most High, Yah of Yahweh Shai, actually, because Yahweh Shai has been placed in the judgment seat. Go and tell him that before the judgment seat. It's going to be like, listen, man, the faith is what would have saved you and not the law. Okay? There are people that keep the law, um, people that keep the law um, just for, um, for uh, culture's sake. Just for culture's sake, man. Oikos? Oikos? You hear my nose? I hear you breathing. Yes, it's dry. It's crazy loud. It's drying up. It's like a desert in my nose right now. You know? <clears throat> this one. Oh, uh, it's a piece of book. Okay, read. Uh, this is uh, Psalms 130, verse 4. Well, let me start at 3 again. If thou, O Yahweh, shouldest mark iniquities, O Yahweh, who shall stand? But there is forgiveness with thee. That thou mayest be feared. Yeah, man. There's forgiveness with the Lord Jehovah. Okay. Therefore, he should be feared. Because is he going to get forget have forgiveness on you or not? Bestow forgiveness on you or not? Okay. But guess what? He sent the Lord Jehovah Shai. It's only because the Son into the world to whom we can get forgiveness. Okay. That's why he called out from the chariot. The Most High called out from the chariot. And he said, this is my Son in whom I am well pleased. Okay. Because why? Uh, uh, Peter, James, and John wanted to build a, uh, an altar for uh, Moses, Elijah, and Yahweh Shai. And Moses said, hey, 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 hold up. This is my son. In him I am uh, well pleased. That doesn't mean that the Moses was a pleased in uh, Elijah. That doesn't mean he was a pleased in, in uh, Moses. Because Elijah was beamed up into the chariot. Hey, you have to be, uh, you know. And Yahweh Shai called, he, uh, called him the greatest prophet. Moses was given uh, certain secrets that no one else knew. He wasn't even allowed to tell the other Israelites concerning the end and, and the beginning, man. Okay, Moses learned things about Adam and Eve and, you know, the lineage. Because the, the first five books of the Bible are the things that he received in the mountain, in Mount Sinai. Moses received those words, so he wrote them down. And that is the Torah, Tarara. Okay. Five books of the law. Okay. 
This is Isaiah 1 verse 9. But there's more. But he didn't write that down. Okay, and the way that the uh, book of Genesis, uh, the first uh, few chapters is parabolically uh, written down, that is the will of the Most High. Write it down like this. Call him a snake. This nation, call him a snake. Call it a tree. Most I instructed him in that way. But to Moses, it was explained plain, straight what it is. So he knows more in, in, that, in that way than us. Okay? Than us today. Because he, he was not allowed to tell it. This is what I want to say about this. already. Okay, give me um, give me that in uh, Second Ezra fourteen. Nope. Yeah, this is uh, Isaiah one verse nine. Except Yahweh, power of hosts, has left unto us a very small remnant. We should have been as Sodom, and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. Exactly. So the Most High has left a remnant okay, amongst the children of Israel, which are uh, uh, his elect. Same thing uh, as in the time of. Uh, as in the time of uh, Jezebel and uh, Ahab, okay, King Ahab, there were still prophets that were alive, and the most I just kept them, man. Because why? Jezebel was killing uh, all the prophets, man. She was slaughtering all the prophets. Shows you that there was a multitude of prophets in that time, because there were still 7,000 left, which is seven is, is, a, uh, is completion. But she slaughtered all the prophets, and there were still 7,000. So you have to think, you might think, oh, prophets, Ezekiel, Isaiah, uh, uh, Obadiah, Malachi. Hey, there's many, many more, man. People that was prophesying. Even in the time of Samuel, you know, uh, with King Saul, King Saul was amongst the prophets. But those men are not mentioned. They was prophesying, okay? They was uh, envisioning what was going to happen in the future, man, through the spirit of power of Yahweh Hashem Yashai, okay? Uh, we are envisioning it. Now, through the, through the scriptures that we read, man, breaking it down and telling the people what is going to happen. Okay? Um, the point of the point. Uh, start at first. This is 2nd Esther, chapter 14 and 1. And it came to pass upon the third day, I sat in there an oak. And behold, there came a voice out of a bush over against me and said, Estras, Estras. And I said, Here are my Lord. And I stood upon my feet. Then said he unto me, in the bush, I did manifestly reveal myself unto Moses and talk with him when my people served in Egypt. Yeah, and the most, the most I spoke through an angel to Moses. Okay, the most I did not uh, manifest himself in the bush. It says I must have manifested myself in the bush, but his angels are his messengers. The word angel in itself means messenger. Okay, and a minister. Uh, the angels are ministers of the Most High. Can you give me that in Psalms 104? Okay. And a minister is someone who serves. When the Most High says this, they go ahead and do it. Okay. They never uh, go against his word. Okay. Um, verse 4. And I sent him and led my people out of Egypt and brought him up to the Mount of Sinai, where I held him by me a long season. Which is 40 days and 40 nights. That's how long Moses was there. Uh, and told him many wondrous things, and showed him the secrets of the times and the end, and commanded him, saying, Showed him the secrets of the times, which when they came out of Egypt, it was the beginning of the times, man. Okay? It was the beginning of the times. It was, uh, you know, literally like uh, around the year 5,000 or something, man. No, 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 not 5,000, because the, uh, they, the made it, yeah, around the year 7,000. Okay, so it was a process, man. And Moses already received, like, hey, this is going to happen. You're going to go into captivity. Hey, you, you name it, man. You name it what he received. But, read. Verse 6, these words shall thou declare. These words, from the things that he received, the Moses said, these words you shall declare. Read. And these shall thou hide. And these shall thou hide. So Moses was not allowed to... to um, to say anything, uh, to say everything. You have a question? Okay. Which testament do you mean? Which testament or which Bible? Which Bible? I don't King know. James. 
King James Old and New Testament. Someone told me to read some pages in the New Testament, the Bible. So I'm looking for one, but I can't find any. And then that's what oh, I realized. Oh, okay. So I thought maybe what did I that, could ask you. Yeah, we can read it. What, what, what did you want to hear? Well, there are a few pages that I need to read, apparently. So. Okay. So, people put down. I don't know. I don't have any clue. But what who told you this? Who told you this? To uh, read a few pages of the New Testament? A friend of mine. Okay. So, thus? It may contain some life lessons. Life lessons? Give me Revelation <laughs> 13 and 9. A life lesson. <laughs> I saw you guys, I thought. Why not? Maybe, uh, maybe that's too hard. Give me uh, yeah. yeah? I'm like, why? Yeah, but, uh, but that, which, which, which books uh, did, did he mentally he mentioned? Which pages? Because there are books, Revelation. I don't know what it's, it's, you don't know really? Saying, you don't really know the Bible? No, I know nothing of the Bible. Okay. So I'm at 16, so and uh, this person that told you this, was this a Dutch person? Yeah. Okay, well, Christian or something? Dutch kiss? Dutch kiss. <laughs> why, why you say that? Huh? Why you say that? His mother is from Suriname and his father is from Ghana. Oh, then he's not, then he's not Dutch. Well, then he's, he's born in the Netherlands. So yeah. Okay. Dutch citizen. But he's yeah. a Dutch yeah. citizen. Yeah. Dutch yeah. citizen. Yeah. But it was page numbers. He, he didn't have book. It was he just book. said like, hey, you know, if you want to become more, you know, instructed in life, go and read yeah, some, some scriptures or something. Situation. Uh, what is the situation? What is the situation? Because yeah. then I can I can pull the scripture for you. It's a bit too private to oh, okay. tell someone friend of my street. Okay. Well, I understand. <laughs> I, I, I already kind of understand where this is heading towards. Give me um um. But he didn't say the particularly of the book. Yeah. Yeah. The New Testament is. Of, of what book? Of what book of the See, Bible? she don't have no. <laughs> Listen, this is what the Bible says concerning women, because that's probably what he wants to, uh, you know, wants you to read, seeing that he's a man of Ghana. You know, I know how those brothers go down. Um, give me a. Um, give me a uh, scriptures concerning uh, these women. Okay. Give me Timothy. Okay. This is what the Bible is really all about towards females, right? Okay. Timothy. Yeah. I was specifying, I thought, you know, I'm looking for a Bible and I see you guys here. Yeah, okay. Me? This is uh, First Timothy chapter 2, verse, uh, verse 9. In like manner, also. That women adore themselves in modest apparel. Yes, yeah, so the Bible says a woman's supposed to dress appropriately. So what you see nowadays with females walking with leggings and stuff in their ass and stuff like that, back in the days that was not normal. Okay, if you would if you would walk around like that, you would be called a prostitute or something. You know? I remember back in the days because I grew up in uh, in North Brabant. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I grew up there, and uh, but for the camera because oh, we have uh, people from all over the world watching. Yeah. Oh, I grew up there. No, 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 no. We are here standing here for the people. Yeah. So uh, you have carnival over there, right? Yeah. Now I remember these girls that went to school with me. Carnival was the time that they was allowed to dress inappropriate. Mm -hmm. You know, with the, with the. Um, uh, with the panties, yeah, with the holes in it, and stuff like that, the hot pants and stuff like that. But throughout the other days, they wouldn't do that. You go to school like that. But nowadays, they dress like that just on regular days, man. That shows you the time is shifting. But according to the Bible, a woman is supposed to dress appropriately, you know, in respect for her husband. Which shame. Huh? You got that covered. But actually, women supposed to wear dresses. Okay. Dresses. Yeah. Because to be honest, a woman has an open, open wound, not a wound, but you know, it needs to breathe. Okay? I don't want to go too deep into it, yeah, but you know what I mean. <laughs> it needs to breathe. And and the Bible also says that the woman shall not wear that which pertains to a, a man. 
which pants men wear pants. A woman is not supposed to wear pants. It's supposed to breathe down there. Okay? Shimpastness and sobriety, not with braided hair, gold, or pearls, across the array. Yeah, so a woman is not supposed to be all out there, no flashing, and no uh, draw attention from other men, especially when she has her own husband at home. She should supposed to be like a um, shame face. So a lot of these females, when they when they wear these uh, yoga pants and stuff like that, they don't care that people is looking at them and lusting after them. Okay, but then when you look, they call you a perfect. But wait a minute, didn't you choose to dress up like that? Now you're calling me a perfect because I look. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you? But look at a woman, her mm -hmm. shape, of course. Because that's what I like. <laughs> I like a woman with shape. If she shows me, but she shouldn't be surprised if she gets treated to what she shows shows you a piece of meat. She shows a piece of meat, so you're gonna be treated like a piece of meat. But if you show how you can treat your husband and how you can take care of a man, then you're gonna be treated differently because the man is gonna be like, damn, this woman's really, you know, touching me in, in other ways that you know is physical. But that are men, those are men that are more intellectual than the regular men. Because if you look at, the, you know, Wiz Khalifa and Taiga and stuff like that, where do they get their uh, wives from? From the strip club. Amber Rose was a stripper. Mm -hmm. Kim Kardashian, she, she, she became famous by porn, uh, porn video. You see, so that they are not that smart. <laughs> you know? Go on. Go on. Um, first 10, but... Which becometh women professing godliness with good works. Yeah, by good works professing godliness. So a woman that really wants to do good in the sight of the most high is gonna be good towards her husband. You know, helping him out, being his backbone. Okay, give me that in the uh, book of Sirach. Give me that in the book of Sirach. Okay, that the woman's supposed to be your uh, pillar of rest. Yeah, we know. Verse 11, let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. Uh -huh. But it's tough for another woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. Yeah, so a woman is not supposed to teach, okay? Not uh, supposed to teach a man, but she's supposed to, you know, teach uh, younger women mm -hmm. how to behave. That's what happened back in the days, during the 80s and 90s. Your mother would show you, like, this is how you cook, clean, and stuff like that. So when you become a, a, an older woman, when you become an older woman, you will be an acceptable wife for the man that you meet because you know how to do all these things so the older woman would instruct the young women this is how you make this like i'm from the caribbean island so there you have a lot of uh, uh, recipes dishes that the men like so the daughters would learn how to make those recipes so they could you know please the man of course <laughs> because a woman is not allowed to teach nor to uh, assert so, authority over a man. So a woman ain't supposed to be a police officer or a judge. That, that Those are not things that the woman should, should be occupied in. Okay? No, go to uh, Titus. Titus. This is Titus, chapter 2. You have the pillar of rest. Okay, give me that. This is the book of Sirach, <clears throat> 36, verse 24. He that get it a wife, begin the possession, a help, like unto himself and a pillar of rest. Yeah, a woman supposed to be a help unto the husband and a pillar of rest. So when the husband comes stressed, comes home stressed from work, and his wife is there, she shouldn't put more stress on him because he's a little bit grumpy or stuff like that. She's supposed to be his pillar of rest. Like, hey, come lay down with me. Boom, I made some food. This and that. You know that is supposed to be the comfort that the man has with the woman. But nowadays, what did this society push this woman towards? Being equal with a man, you know, oh, I, I can also work uh, that type of job and stuff like that. What, what uh, position? What you mean? No, you now you have to work, but during the 80s, you was uh, women was fighting, women was fighting for, uh, for equal rights. And now that equal, those equal rights biting them in the ass because now they have to work their ass off too. But back in the days, one man was able to provide for his whole family, you see? But they was only able to tax the man. His income would be taxed. Now they set up a woman, Ma Margaret Sanger, right? Yeah, Margaret, Margaret Sanger. Sanger she, was, uh, she was pushing equal rights for women, but 
But she was just the insider. She was just set up by the government because the government wanted to tax everyone. Let's say there are 10, uh, 10 billion people in the world and five, uh, 5 billion are men. And they get five, uh, money from those 5 billion men. They want to have the 5 billion women also. So that money would double in the government then. So they set up this woman. She was, uh, you know, pushing for equal rights for women. That the women are allowed to work also. And then the women work. And then guess what? Before your money reaches your bank account, they already took your money. Let's say you sign a contract for your job. Okay, you, you earn 4000 a month. You don't earn 4000 a month because you damn tax me 40%. Okay, my salary is netto, not bruto. So why, what is the point of even letting me know what I earn bruto? It's not mine. It's yours, you see? So now the woman is allowed to work also. Oh, yes, we won, we won. Women, equal rights. Give me your money too, <laughs> you see? Give me your money too. Now I can tax the man and the woman. But back in the days, it was just cool. The man could provide for the whole household. Yeah? Yes? Faithful to my wife? Yes. But faithful in what way? The Bible doesn't speak about uh, a man can cheat. A man, give me uh, Exodus 21. A man is not able to cheat. Do you know that in Eritrea, a man has to have at least two wives because uh, uh, the population upon the planet Earth, if you believe in, in the Most High in God, he created more women than men. No, but if the man desires to have another wife, he can take it. He doesn't have to have permission from his, uh, from, uh, from his uh, wife. He doesn't have to ask for permission. No, actually not, because a girlfriend, if 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 you have if you had sex with a woman, she's your wife. Sex is marriage. Yeah, that's why in the Bible, give me the uh, account where the Lord said he um, yeah, have many husbands. Why do we think that's the wrong Bible? But no, it is an interesting conversation. Why would it be the wrong Bible? Every every Bible is the same. Only the translation is different. There are no different Which types of Bibles. No, it's no, it's just uh, it makes it harder for you to interpret. There's only one interpretation. If I say, if I say in Dutch, rotop, and I literally translate it to the English, rot away. My what I try, what I'm trying to say is still the same. But you, as an American person, you're gonna be like, huh? What is the what is gonna rot? What is rotten? What you talking about? You don't understand it that well because I literally translated it. But what I'm trying to say is still the same. You see? Give me that. Um, no, no, no. He's grabbing that. So give me a what, give me Exodus 21. This is Exodus chapter 21 and uh, verse 10. If ye take him another wife, her food and raiment in her duty of marriage shall he not diminish. So if a man wants to have another wife, so, so this is the thing that blocks a man from just going out there and having 20, 30 wives. He needs to be able to take care of her. So read it again. Exodus chapter 21, verse 10. If ye take him another wife. If a man desires to have another wife, he has a woman, takes care of her, gives her food, raiment, uh, clothing. A man is supposed to buy your clothing according to the law. Okay? Her food, her raiment, and her duty of marriage shall he not diminish. So if he desires to take another woman, he has to uh, make sure she eats. He has to make sure she has clothes on her back and he has to give her sex. If he cannot give, if he cannot give her sex, then she's allowed to leave him according to the law. You see? This is what the Bible is all about. But nowadays you have something called Christianity set up as a religion, which they don't bring out these scriptures in the church. They don't, they don't tell you about these things, but this is actually what the Bible really says, okay? And that man from Ghana, he knows these things, because in Ghana, it's normal to have multiple wives. You see? Uh, yeah? This is uh, 16? Uh, no, Genesis uh, 24. Oh, yeah, about the sex is marriage. Read. Oh, yes. This is uh, Genesis chapter 24, verse 67. And Isaac brought her into his 
into his mother Sarah's tent. Yeah, so Isaac, he saw Rebecca. Rebecca came off the horse. And when he saw her, he was like, wow. And he brought her in his mother's tent, we done, and took Rebecca and he took her, meaning her sex. Read. And she became his wife. Then she became his wife. It doesn't say nothing about the man has to go on one knee, put the ring on the finger of the woman. The Bible doesn't speak about that. That is added. And that's actually Roman. Because um, uh, the Romans, they used to worship uh, planets as being gods. Merc uh, Mercurius, uh, Jupiter, Jupiter, and uh, Venus. Venus. Now there's one planet that has this ring. Saturn. Right? Saturn. 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 So they were um, worshipping Saturn. Saturnalia. Saturnalia. And uh, that is what that ring represents. So it goes back to Roman. Now, what, what happened during um, 325 AD? The Roman Catholic Church was set up. But Rome, the Romans persecuted you, everyone calls Jesus. So how can it be Roman Catholic? What does the Romans have to do with the Bible? You see, that's a con contradiction in itself, that religion is false. Because when you read a couple of scriptures out of the Bible to these uh, Roman Catholics, they'd be like, oh, 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 no, no, no. We're not going to keep that. Why not? You believe in the Bible, right? Yeah, only the things that are pleasing to them. And that's often with these females also. They say they believe in the Bible. And when we actually read the things that are in the Bible, they'd be like, no, 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 I don't want to do that. You see? And he loved her. And he loved her. That's what you're supposed to do. The Bible says you have to love your, your wife as you love yourself. You see? And treat her with benevolence, which is uh, kindness. Now, when a woman, give me that. Uh, the account where it says uh, your body is not of yourself. Because there might be certain instances that you have a husband. Let's say you have a husband and he wants to get down, right? But you have a headache. The Bible says you're supposed to give him what he wants. And when you want him to get freaky, he's supposed to give you what uh, what you want. You see? There's no there's no like, no, not today. I don't feel like it. No, you have to give it. This is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 7. And uh, I'm, I'm helping that, uh, that man from Ghana. Like, hey, you see? <laughs> This is what the Bible says. Um, yeah, maybe uh, I don't know what uh, what, what kind of relationship you uh, you have with him. This is First Corinthians <laughs> chapter seven and verse verse three. Let the husband render unto the wife with benevolence. Yes. Yeah, so the husband has to treat um, the wife with benevolence, which is kindness. He has to be kind to her. Right? And likewise, also the wife unto the husband. And likewise, also the wife. To the, husband. the wife. It's not the power of her own body, but the husband. So the husband has power over your body. Meaning, if he wants to have sex with you, you have to give it. You don't have power over your own body. Right? And likewise, also, the husband has not power of his own body, but the wife. The wife has power over the body of the husband. So if the wife wants to have sex, he has to give it. If the, if the husband wants to have sex, she has to give it. Right? Mm -hmm. Uh, verse 5, because that will create a healthy relationship. Because if you block each other from that sexual desire towards each other, it's going to be madness, man. Oh, today not, and then yes, and then, oh, no, but now I don't want. It's going to create friction, and that is not healthy. Okay, Take an aspirin or something if you have a headache. And do, do what you got to do, right? Verse 5, defraud ye not one another, except to be with consent for a time. That you may give yourself to fasting and prayer. So, okay, what do you have? Titus, I have to see was read. Titus. Titus. But the Bible says we're supposed to have this. Look, this is a book, and it's full of instructions. Okay? And something in the beginning links up with something in the end. Okay? There is instructions. This book is a book of history. History, present, future, meaning it's, it's, prof it's a prophetic book. So something that happened 2,000 years ago was prophesied already longer before. Some things that are happening right now was written down 2,000 years ago. See? For example, did you know that slavery is in the Bible? Slavery of the... the uh, uh, Transatlantic uh, and, uh, Atlantic slave trade is in the Bible. Okay, so these things are all written there. But the the uh, that slavery happened 400 years ago to us. 
So, but it's written. This is uh, Isaiah chapter 28 and uh, point? Yeah. verse 10. For precept must be on precept. Okay, so the Bible says if you want to understand the scriptures, precept has to be upon precept. Read. Precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little, here a little, and there a little. Okay, if you want to understand that, go to this book. Read this. It links together. That's why I, uh, how the Bible is read, how the Bible is set up, look. You have, for example, here, watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit of Jesus is willing, but the flesh is weak. Then here it says, you can also go to Ephesians 6 and Galatians 5 and 17 to get more understanding. You see? Because they all link with each other. That's why. So you know yeah, we study every day. Most are willing. Sometimes we have some things in life that also need to be done, and you might get hindered, but, you know, we read this book. Are you some kind of leader? No. Look. Or just taking the lead? No, and in, in, in this group, that all these brothers that are standing here, there's a certain ranking, okay? And other brothers are over other brothers, you see? But that is order, because if he wouldn't uh, follow after his rank, he would start talking to you, he would start talking, and we all would be talking to you, because then we all would want to answer you. But there's one speaker and two readers, and that's how everything is decency and in order. That's why in the classroom, when you go to school, if you want to say something, what you have to do? Raise your finger, right? That is order, so there's no confusion, because everyone wants to say something. If everyone just starts speaking at the same time, the teacher can never teach the class, you see? <laughs> yeah, you wasn't clear with your question. Otherwise, we could, you know, also yeah. back you up concerning things that you would want to know. Because what, yeah, what the duties of a man? There's, there's one, there's one Bible, but different translations. But this King James is the closest to the original text wherein the Bible was written, which is Hebrew yes. and Greek. Yeah, so it's. It's more accurate, but um, it is old English, old English, which is a little bit difficult to understand. Okay, for example, it says, uh, "Don't fret yourself." In the old, uh, in the King James, it says, "Don't fret yourself because of uh, evildoers." Now, fret goes to the Dutch word, "preter." Okay, so preach yourself not op. What betekent dat? Laat iets niet op preter. Betekent van Ga niet uh, heel erg geïrriteerd raken door dit. Want eigenlijk komt het Engels komt van het Nederlands en Duits. Engels is een Germanic language. Oké? Okay? So, uh, minute. Well, comes from the Dutch word minute. Oké, okay, rock, sack, rugzak. Snap je? So, when English people read this, they be like, fret? What does fret mean? We know it because we know Dutch. So, don't, uh, don't get over irritated because of uh, evildoers. That is what the new King James Version would say. But the old King James Version would say fret. Okay? Or suffer. Suffer. In the new English, suffer means to uh, have pain. To suffer things. But in the old English, suffer means to allow. I suffer him to go. I allow him to go. What you mean. That's why you have to, if you want to understand the Bible, you have to go into words. That is called etymology. Etym means the root of the word, ology, everything that has ology in the back is study. Study of the root of word, words, physiology, you yeah, have all these words. You, you study that? No, but I can say it. Okay, so you know, you've uh, been to psychiatry. Okay, so uh, how do you, uh, how do you observe people and in, in, in how they would, that's why you said, like, oh, you, you the leader. It has nothing to do with that. If he was speaking, I would be quiet. See? I got that. Okay, read. This is uh, the book of 1 Corinthians 14, verse 29. Let the prophets speak two or three, and let the other judge. Two if, or three. Yeah. If anything be revealed to one, to another that sitteth by, let the first hold his peace. For ye may all prophesy one by one, that all may learn and all may be confident. See, so it's the point is to let other people learn. So we have to be in order and not speak to each other. 
Yeah, I am a dominant person. Yeah. That's true. But that is also when I'm not teaching. I'm a dominant person. That's why I have lions on my on my wrist. <laughs> Coincidentally, I said this yesterday. <laughs> like the Bible says, a lion is the is the strongest amongst beasts, and he doesn't turn away for any. So a lion, when he gets a bruise, he is not gonna back run off. away. He's not gonna back off. He's king of the jungle, man. It's true. And the funny thing is, lions don't even live in the jungle. But anyway, <laughs> um, that was it, right? Jumping to verse 33. For Corinthians 14 and 33, for Yahweh, for God, is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. And uh, jumping to the first. But, but uh, do you have a man or are you single? Oh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> you make us speculate like what's going on this, <laughs> this life, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. on Facebook you have it's, uh, it's the, complicated it's no complicated yeah, yeah. 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 Honestly, yeah. but what does he want he wants you to um, like um, accept how he believes and all those things or his culture he just wants you to know that learn a little bit more or something yeah, yeah that's good that's good because a woman. Uh, well, it's not really his idea. Okay, so that uh, the woman shall be sanctified. Because you can you can have a woman and she doesn't even believe. That doesn't mean that you cannot be with her. She just doesn't believe, but she likes you a lot. You see, you have it. Yeah. Okay, read it. This is First Corinthians. Mm -hmm. This is First uh, Corinthians chapter seven and. Um, Start at verse, uh, verse 12. But to the rest speak I, not the Lord. If any brother hath a wife that believeth not, if she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. Yeah, so a man also, so like they said, uh, sex is marriage. The moment a man has sex with a woman, she becomes his wife. Now, he's not a, allowed, according to the Bible, to just say after a couple of weeks, like, hey, I'm done with you. I don't want to be with you no more. Because then the woman is like, hey, what is this? I desire, I decided to, you know, lay down with you and do the intimate things. And now you just leave me like this? He's not. A... No, not nothing. I'm just speaking in general. A man is not uh, supposed to do that because nowadays you have that fucking duck like, oh, let me hit her real quick. Then I block her number and stuff like that. That is not biblical. The moment you desire. Uh, have sex with a woman, she becomes your wife, you need to take care of her. And even if she does not believe, that's the point of this scripture. If she doesn't believe, that doesn't give you a reason like, yeah, you don't believe, so I don't want to be with you. No, she likes you, so stay with her. Read it again. Um, this is First Corinthians 7, and starting in verse 12. But to the rest speak I, not the Lord. Any brother has a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. Yeah, don't put her away. She's a lovely woman. If you want to be with you, stay with her. See? And that she doesn't believe, okay. Try to find some, uh, like a middle way in, in your belief and the ways in the house. Because the Bible, for example, says that you're not supposed to eat pork. But maybe the woman, maybe the woman that you live with, she likes pork. So now it's like a conflict in the house now. Okay. The man can say like, look, did you ever eat lamb? Did you ever eat lamb meat? Because lamb is a clean animal, uh, according to the Bible. And then she tries the lamb, and maybe she say, hey, I like this even better than pork. This, you see? Turkey and then bacon. turkey bacon. Did you ever eat turkey bacon? You don't have to eat bacon necessarily. It tastes the same. So what's the point? See? Read. Um, verse 13. And the woman which has an husband that believe it not, and if he, be, if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. Yeah, the same is the same way vice versa. Okay, if the woman believes and the man not, don't leave each other. Because the Bible says what the Mosai has put together that no man put asunder. So nobody is supposed to interfere in another man's relationship neither. If we uh, uh likewise when you guys the house give not uh, 
because this is the thing that happens nowadays, right? You let a lot of people into your relationship due to social media or uh, uh, when a woman is hurt, let's say, you know, I have an argument, an argument with my wife and she didn't like the argument, so she leaves the house. She goes and chill at her girlfriend's house. Now she's going to spill all the beans, how bad of a man I am. And she doesn't like it. And uh, this is the third time that he acts like this. She's like, oh, writing it down. Third time? You say, okay. What else does he do? Because women like gossip. Women like to hear uh, stories that are like, uh, oh, man. Why do women like soap series? Because it's a lot of a, a lot of drama. Like, whoa, oh, so now she's sleeping with him? What? You see, they like those type of things. So a woman is gonna be interested in the in the in the drama that is happening in your relationship, but it shouldn't even touch her ears. She has nothing to do with it. So the Bible says this as an advice. Right? Yeah. Because the brother is going into that. Uh, other women, other females are giving them advice. They're intervening in the relationship, but you. But you were signing an uh, agreement with the government that you're married, married that is also letting uh, somebody from the outside judge what is happening in your household. You know, you're, uh, the, 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 the serpent or the, the government is then like, hey, if you break up with him now, you can get 50% of what he has, you know? So she's being enticed by all those things, yeah. you know, because, by, because of the agreement that you allowed by putting a, a third person into the the relationship yeah or when a man and a, a, a man and a woman break up and there are children if you you're supposed to fix the uh, the regulations and stuff like that with your wife yeah, yourself, yeah. but the moment you let the government in come into play then it's gonna be drama man a lot of drama because now someone from outside is gonna tell you how you're supposed to um, handle your business you see read this is uh, first Timothy 5, verse 14. I will therefore that the younger women marry their children, guide the house. So the duties of a woman is to marry, mean get a husband, bear children, bear children, become pregnant. The Bible says be fruitful and multiply. Bear children. This is the whole goal of a woman, actually, because maybe nowadays you have females that don't desire to have children. But a woman's dream is to become a mother, right? Or not? That would be beautiful, right? To, be, to have children, be a mother, I should bump your patient. No? Back in the day, it would be uh, considered um, yeah. uh, blessing. Yeah, man. Yeah. No, but I mean, if, you, if a, a woman would be barren, if she could, yeah. then if it you would be get a, shame, pregnant, a she, shameful thing. For not really like, shameful, but she would just be. Uh, yeah, very, down and yeah, very down and uncomfortable. Be like, here, take my slave, take my uh, my my maid, you impregnate her, make uh, make my man happy. That's yeah. how it used to go, you know. Yeah. But now it's all flipped the other way around. That's right. Yeah, so it says, um, I will therefore that the younger women marry, bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversity to Adver speak, uh, adversary adversaries a lot, yeah, to speak reproachfully yeah so a woman is supposed to give non occasion meaning don't allow someone else to speak shit to talk shit about your relationship you shouldn't allow that to happen now how can you prevent that from not talking because again back to the story when 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 my wife goes to her girlfriend and talks all this shit about me then the moment we are in a crucial point of our relationship that is really like or we stay together or not, she goes to that girlfriend again, and now she needs some comfort from that girlfriend. Like, yeah, I don't know, I'm really, I'm really done, but I love him so much. She's gonna pull the notebook. Hey, remember when you came to me? He did this, he did this, that, 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 that. Yeah, he's a piece of shit. Then she's gonna be like, damn, yeah. And then she makes an, and that woman, that girlfriend, she's single. And she's giving her advice how to, Deal with her relationship, but she's single herself. Giving advice to a woman that is actually in a relationship that has ups and downs. Every relationship has ups and downs. It might be right, but she has no right to intervene in that relationship. Let them work it out. You see, and a right, a, a righteous uh, a friend would always advise you to work it out and not to break up. Okay. But 
the thing is with with females, emotions often come into play, and that is the problem. That's why when you're watching a soap series, you might be angry at this one guy in the soap series because he has all these women at the same time. He's cheating. Get angry. You'd be like, hey, I don't like uh, Rich or, um, <laughs> uh, you know, Brooke. <laughs> Rich. <laughs> right? From uh, Bolton, 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 Bolton. Bolton. <laughs> You know both of the beautiful? Okay. I just tried something right, like... We don't know because you don't ask the question. So we just giving you left and right. And I don't know your situation either. Right? And we are talking about relationships. So, okay, let me give you a summary. So I showed you what the Bible actually says. So there are some things that this man might expect from you. But we just, we also read, like, I don't, uh, like, in your case, you can say, I don't have to believe. Because if you believe and I like you, that is enough. Oh, really? Really? Yeah, the Bible says that. I learned it today by some guys in the street. Okay, that is something that you can, you know, have profit of. You don't have to necessarily believe. If you like him, that's good enough. Okay, but he might, like, come with certain things that are biblical, and now you know them too. For example, when he wants sex, I'm supposed to give him. When I want sex, he's supposed to give me. And uh, you're supposed to feel kindly with each other. And he is not allowed to put you away. Okay, that's another thing that the Bible says. When you have a wife... The Bible says, uh, give me a um, seek not to be loose. And do you have the many wives, uh, John? Yeah, it's a, it's a woman at the well. Samaritan woman at the well. She said, like, uh, um, give me up that water. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Read. This is John 4 and 13. Jesus answered and said unto her, oh, no, no, go a little bit. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I have it instantly. It's verse 18, but start at uh, start at uh, 15. No, no, no. Start, yeah, start at 15. This is uh, John 4 and 15. So he who everyone calls Jesus met a woman. She came to this well where you can, uh, you know, uh, get Fill, fill up your um, your bottles of water. So, John 4 and 15. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not. Yeah, because uh, Jesus said, I have water that will never make you to thirst. But he was talking about the, the understanding of the scriptures. You will never be thirsty because the scripture says that the knowledge of the Bible is like flow, uh, uh, rivers of uh, living water. Now, living water represents um, flowing water, but if you are not flow, flowing, flowing, flowing water. water, and stagnated water brings forth what? Bacteria, that flies, diseases, but flowing water is like, hey, you can drink it if it's being filtered by, by the stones and the sand, you can drink it, there's a lot of fishes in it and life, okay? So the scriptures lead to life, but stagnated water lead to death. So he said, I have water, that leads to life. You will never thirst again. You will be taken care of. And she said, give me of that water. I want to have that water. She thought it was literally some water to drink. Me? John 4 and 15. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not. Neither come hither to draw. Jesus said unto her, Go, call thy husband and come hither. Yeah, he said, you know, go get your husband and let him come talk to me. But he... He could read her mind and he knew her whole situation without even knowing this woman because he had, you know, certain powers. Read. Verse 17. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. She's like, what's she talking about? I don't even have a husband. But she was dealing with a man, but they didn't come together yet. They didn't have sex yet. So she was dealing with a man, but they wasn't together yet. Jesus so said, she said, ah, what's she talking about? I have no husband. Read. Jesus said unto her, thou hast well said. I said, you said a good thing right there. You said a good thing. Read. I have no husband. Oh, thou hast five husbands. He said you have five because she already had sex with five men. So actually, you have five husbands. Read. And he. Whom That's thou... why we said sex is marriage. Okay. A woman is actually supposed to have one man in her life. Because the moment every all these men ejaculate in her, she is going to have that that. 
that DNA. Energy, that DNA of that man uh -huh. up in her. Because there is a scientific study that says the sperm of a man or the DNA of a man resides in a woman's um, spine more than 50 years. Go on. John 4 and 18. That's why you have women that if they have a lot of sex, they are not really... They can't connect also to one man. They can't connect to one man because they have that DNA of multiple men up in them. Read. They, they become a little bit uh, of a nutcase. Yeah, yeah, like multiple yeah, personalities yeah, and shit true. like that. I saw it. Read. Yeah, mm -hmm. bending songs. So John 4. Yeah. And actually, a woman always keeps the man in mind that she lost her virginity. She always keeps him in mind. Now that is all spiritual because that's the war, that's the man that she should have been with. Read. John 4 and 18. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. Yeah, he, so he said, yeah, you're right. You had five husbands, but the man you with now, you're all not together yet. Read. In that says thou truly. See? The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. So, because he knew her whole situation, she was like, hey, I think you are a prophet. But he was more than that. He was the son of the Most High. Okay? Yeah? Uh, a little bit more in First Corinthians, I get five. Okay, me. This is uh, Proverbs 30, verse 31. Proverbs 30? Okay. Proverbs 30, verse 18. There be three things which are too wonderful for me, yea, four which I know not. Verse 19. The way of an eagle in the air, the way of a serpent upon a rock, the way of a ship in the midst of the sea, and the way of a man with a maid. So the reason why I brought this out is that um, the brother was explaining that other women are going to give the man, uh, the, the woman advice like, yeah, he, he did all these things and it's, it's not good for you to be with him. But the scripture says, the fourth, I, I know not. That's a, the way of a man and a woman. You can't, you, you don't, you don't have to ask the person to do it. You can't ever tell somebody how to be with their wife or how to be with their husband because it's not, it's not your business. Yeah. Scripture says, the fourth, I, I know not, you know. The things that are beautiful, the eagle in the air, and the, the, the you place. can see it. Yeah, yeah, you can visualize it. But a man and his wife in a relationship, you—that's not your business. You don't know nothing about that. See, so you're supposed to keep that sick secret. Uh, let the man guide you. Okay, let the man guide you, because there cannot be two captains on one boat. If the one captain wants to go left and the other captain wants to go right. Guess what? That other captain is going to get his own boat because he don't want to deal with that captain. They don't agree together. So in order to be to agree together, someone has to take the lead. And the woman is supposed to allow the man to take the lead. Now, she can give the husband advice like, hey, I don't think this is smart to do it like this. Maybe it's better if you do it like that. But eventually, if he doesn't agree, okay, let's do it your way. And then if, if plans turn out to go bad, you can tell him, like, I actually told you so. And then, you know, he starts to respect you more. Like, oh, she comes with some good ideas. And then y'all become a bond. Yeah, you become bond to your uh, to your wife. And your, and your wife, the wife becomes bond to her husband. And they become a team. They work together. You fill me up where I, where, where I have need of. You know, you actually my backbone. Because what does a woman want to be? A woman wants to stand next to the man. Yeah, I'm great next to I'm great, just like you. But actually, a woman should be behind a husband. Why behind? A man in his life, he gets hits from the front. He's, he has like um, a duty to take care of his wife, his children. So he has like this, um, this duty that he carries. Now, when he gets hits from the front, his wife is right there behind him to, to lift him up. Like, hey, don't worry about it. Everything will be fine. You lost your job. But you are, you are a smart man. You get a job in no time. Don't worry about it. That is comfort. But some women, they'd be like, yeah, I knew you was going to lose your job because you don't. That is adding stress onto his stress. The Bible says don't add stress onto a man that is already stressed. So that would be a woman, a good woman. She comforts him. That's the rock. Yeah. Oh, yeah, a man is stronger than a woman. Of 
point. No? Why not? I think the woman is the stronger than the Okay. Why? Sorry, I'm saying. No, no, you can't speak. It's, it's your opinion. It's your opinion. I will say just my idea. I think the position of a woman is highest in the position, highest positions in, in the world. You know why? Look. Jesus. Where he come from, Jesus? From Miriam. Yes? No, he comes from Joseph before okay, he comes from okay, Miriam. Okay, whatever. You come out of your father become, before you come no, out of I your mother. I came from my mother. You come know, out of your father daughter, first. No, at that time, where am I come from? Listen. Yeah, no, just I say my... Okay. I want to say my idea. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. Just I hope you are. I hope you're well. Okay. I hope you're. You know, you got what you needed. <laughs> okay. Good luck. Okay. I said my idea. Yeah, yeah. I said. But I'm saying it makes no sense. No, no. Just, I'm just. I want to say my idea. Okay. Yeah. Because if there was a not there, if there is no woman, where we come from? That if there's no man, where we come from? Where, it's the same thing. A where, man and a woman need each other to bring forth children. Where, they come, where uh, Jesus come from? From, the, from? from a man or from a woman? He came from his father first before he came out of his mother. Okay. Every man comes out of his father first because you have a seed. If you want to plant the apple tree, yeah, you get the seed, right? Yes. You right. put the seed in the ground. Yes. The seed might grow in the ground, but what the thing that that you put in it comes from the apple. You see, same thing with people. The man carries seeds. He might put it in a woman, but what comes out of it is his seed. You understand? You have a pizza, yes. a frozen pizza. You put it in the oven. Nine months, it's in the oven. You know, to just link it with pregnancy, right? Nine months is there. Now the oven did his job. He made the pizza, the cheese to melt, and everything became you know, uh, uh, cooked. So the, the, the oven had its effect on the pizza, but what comes out of it is still the same thing as you put in. Okay? So the child might look a little bit like the wife, like the woman, more than you maybe, but what you put in it is still yours. That's why actually a race is also decided by the husband, by the man. Have a precept. Thank you. And of course, a man has his duties and a woman has his duties. And you can say, like, the role of a woman is more important, but the role of the man is just as important, okay? And what I tried to explain this this woman is that if you have a relationship wherein you fight each other because you both want to be the boss, it's not a healthy relationship. One has to take the lead, okay? Now, you have certain women that are very dominant and men that are very quiet, like soft. Now, if you have a woman that takes advantage of that situation, the relationship is going gonna go nowhere, man. Because then you're just a soft dude that gets ruled by his uh, wife. At the yeah. Yeah. This, the book of, okay. this is the book of Sirach, uh, 26, verse 24. A dishonest woman contended shame, but the honest woman will reverence her husband. Yeah, man. An honest woman will reverence her husband. Reverence means respect. See? An honest woman will respect her husband. Even in times that he has to be ashamed of what he did, she will still respect him. For example, Abigail and Nabal. Nabal did the foolish things. And she even told King David, like, isn't his name rightfully called, you know, uh, Nabal, which means fool? But she, she respected him in a way that she made sure that he wouldn't die by the hand of the king, which King David wasn't king back then. But by the hand of King David, you see, so she took care of that, that situation out of respect for her husband. And, and until he was dead, then she went and moved on and King David took her to his wedding. Uh, this is Proverbs uh, chapter 12, verse 4. And this is exactly what I should do. Like this, man. With the tight, tightest pants upon the planet Earth. <laughs> okay. Now, a lustful thing nowadays in the Earth is to look at a woman struggling to put her pants on, right? <laughs> ass jiggling, <laughs> struggling to pull the, the jeans over the ass. That is supposed to be a lustful thing nowadays. That's not even supposed mm. to happen. And then you got beasts like that, fucking rhinos, that think, 
for them to wear leggings. What are you doing? Don't you see the, the, the condition of your body, the shape of your body, or not the condition where your body is in? It is obese. Don't wear those type of things. And even if she's not obese, because that's the previous point, don't wear it neither. No, man. But it's common sense, like, especially when you look like that, don't do it, man. And don't be amazed that men start to lust after you because that's what you create yourself. They do it for a reason also because they know this is where Jake hangs out, that they always wear the tightest shirts when they come over here. You also see, you also see the Edomites, the Edomites, they try to force it and they come looking for a husband over here because they know here, you know, Jake is like, let's get over here, let's get your number. So they do it with uh, willingly. They know what they're doing exactly. You know what the funny thing is with these fat, fat women? If you address them and tell them, hey, hey, girl, you look fine, you know what I'm saying? They're so shocked because they never get complimented. <laughs> so they're so shocked that they come with an attitude. Yeah. Like, hey, well, what you looking at? This and this and that. Because it happened It happened to me over here. There was this fat <laughs> Jake female. I said, oh, damn, you look good. You look mighty fine, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and she gave me an attitude. I was like, what the fuck? But it's also Amsterdam. <laughs> and it's also Amsterdam. Yeah, Amsterdam, yeah. These yeah. fat females. They take the example of these uh, so-called good-looking ones, right? Mm -hmm. And then they want to act like them. But you are in no position to act like them. <laughs> okay? You would need to lose some pounds. You want to get a grenade. Yeah, man. <laughs> you're, you're and, and, the, and the tactic is always to go for the grenade. Yeah. So you yeah. Just, uh, yeah. use it. Yeah. Just to make the, 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 the pretty one jealous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. I can read that for the precept. Oh, okay. Oh. Because she brought it up, but there might might have been some some people that needed to hear it. Yeah, it's good, you know. There, are, the, the Bible gives you instructions on how to be in a relationship and all these things. But we are living in a time of prophecy, man. Okay. And a part of prophecy is that the Gentiles, which are Israelite foreigners, would wake up to this truth and are scattered from all all across the world, man. So. Uh, advice towards brothers is to um, really diligently look at a man's spirit. Because Jake, an Israelite, can look in all uh, types of ways uh, nowadays, man. He can look all types of ways. He can look like a Moabite, he can look like a, an Ishmaelite, an Edomite, an Elamite. Elam. Yeah, man. There's this guy at, the, at my gym uh, training Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. So, um, he looks like a Elon man. He looks like a man from India. Like straight up coolie. But then I was sparring with him. I'd be like, this dude is too skilled, man. Like I already started doubting like, hey, maybe he is a Punjabi or mm -hmm. um, um, uh, Dalit. So I started doubting. I was like, man, this, I think this guy is Jake, man. Okay, okay, okay. So then we are in the, in the locker rooms. Months later, maybe years later, we are in the locker rooms. And uh, he just became father. So uh, then this other coolie asked him, like, so do you do the rituals and stuff like that? And he said, nah, nah, nah. I ain't really about that because that's the other side of the family. But now I hear it. I say, what you mean other side of the family? He said, yeah, it's my mother's side. I say, mother's side? I said, so what's your father? He said, yeah, my father is Creole. Like, uh, you know, uh, Surinamese uh, Jake, dark-skinned Jake. Ah, it makes yeah, all the yeah. sense. Now I understand. So it's the spirit that you need to use. Like you kind of feel that hmm, he's not a regular Elamite, or, because the dude that asked him, he's a straight up Elamite. Okay, he ain't got no skill. He's like a, he's almost purple belt, and I'm like, you can't do shit, man. You fucking whack. <laughs> and he's gonna go uh, uh, into an MMA fight also. No, he was going to. He signed up for an MMA fight. Uh, uh, amateur MMA fight and uh, 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 stay fun and put him up. Yeah, man. And other Jakes in the in the gym, they are quick to be pushed to go and fight, man. Mm -hmm. My trainer was constantly asking me, Amir, every training I would come sparring and stuff like that. He said, hey, go fight, man. Go fight, man. Hey, come on, man. Hey, go to fight, see you man. in the ring, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, he, 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 Jake, man. he liked Jake too much also. So, um, yeah, man, you need to check the spirit. So give me Romans 8. 
and um, give me uh, Isaiah 11. And uh, you need to watch out with your Bible. You need to watch out with your Bible. If you walk three steps too long, your pages are going to yeah, it turns out to be sweaty and your pages are going to tear. So just memorize the scripture. And uh, when you see the time fit that it, the, the topic comes back, just bring it back. I have Isaiah 11. 11 and 11, yeah. Uh, you read that, the other one, the S, Romans 8. Yeah, and he has Isaiah. This is uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 16. The Spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of the Most High. See, so it's the Spirit. Just like how this woman, how this uh, female, she said that I'm, uh, I'm dominant and stuff like that because she studies uh, psychology. psychology. So, because, you know, the thing with females is they always want to let you know what she is about. So I, I named, and it's a spirit, I named, I gave two examples. The etymology, physiology. And she was like, I know what it means. Yeah, I I'm said, a scientist. You know it? You, you are, uh, yeah, and then she said it. So, just like how she is studied to read, like, what people are about and what their intentions is, we know it through spirit, Okay. We see through the spirit like, hey, this guy is he's not a heathen, man. Look at him. Okay? And that is a very important thing to, um, to uh, consider when you are in this truth. Because you might just end up, uh, you know, fucking a man up that wants to learn. But he's Jake. Just because he looks different, you, you're, fucking, uh, you're fucking him up. Okay? But you might get a little bit nervous because, hey, you, you're like, hey, don't know this dude. I had that with him. Okay, he was training at the same gym as me. And then it came to the point that am I gonna tell him the truth? Yay or nay? And I told him, and then I was like, oh man, he's gonna tell everyone in the gym what I'm all about, that I'm teaching in the highways and bios and stuff like that. Then he didn't show up for months. And then when when I came to the gym and he was there, he said, Hey, show him up. I said, like, yo, yo, yo. I said, hey. <laughs> Oh, man, don't say it like that. It's like, oh, oh shit. Shalom, I was like, oh, he's been studying, yeah. researching things. Okay, so after the gym, I spoke with him again. And then, uh, you know, now, now he's here, you know what I'm saying? So, you might feel a little bit uncomfortable to go towards someone that is that looks like he hidden, but hey, he might just be a jig, man. See? Okay, and often, if you... Um, in sports or something, kind of clash with someone. He's he might be Jake, man, because Jake got that spirit towards each other. Mm -hmm. Eden and Jake, they they might hate hate your guts, but they are gonna act friendly towards mm -hmm. you. But Jake don't act friendly towards Jake. If something happens, it's gonna be all out war, man. Step on my shoe. <laughs> I dare you. You know it's gonna be World War Three right there, man. If a Jake steps on the shoe, but if a Jake steps on the Edomite shoe, the Edomite is gonna tell the Jake sorry. Meanwhile, he stepped on his shoe. You see? <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. That you, that I put my foot there. Yes, and then you stepped on it. You see? They are acting differently to it. But then again, the Edom might be like, fuck you, nigga. Yeah. You see? Cursing okay. you. So we. Smash it to five is 13. We are the salt of the earth. But if the salt that loves the savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is then good for nothing but to be cast out and be trodden under, under the foot of man. But the reason that I put it is, you know, the spirit bad witness that we are the children of the Most High. You know, Israelites have been given flavor, talent. You know, that's one of the, the, the signs that you can be looking, you know, at someone that might look like the other, uh, other nations. You know, if he has, has flavor, if he has, you know, talent in sports or things like that, rap, you know, and things like that, you know, he might be an Israelite. Yeah, and it doesn't mean that Jake is good in everything, okay? Because you might see a Jake can't dance. But in the thing that he can do, he is very good. You also have nerdy Jakes. They are nerds. They are freaking smart. But if you put them uh, if you put them in the soccer team, he's not going to perform. Man. His condition is whack. He's very smart, man. The, 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 the calculations. Like my younger brothers, man. Yo. They fucking smart. With math? Yo. You know, a certain... Um, um, Oh, so calculation comes out, and here it is. I'm doing this. He already have my, my younger brother already has the answer, man. 
like shit. I didn't even, you know, have the time to think about it, and you already have it, man. Freaking quick, man. Okay. But then my other younger brother, he's faster. He's more athletic. Okay, I see it with my sons too. One one of my sons, he's all jacked up, buff, uh, fucking abs and shit. And then the other son is a little bit chubby and stuff like that. You see? So you have different types of Jake. Not every Jake is a superhuman. You see? In, in uh, uh, athleticism. You have different type of Jakes, man. Not every Jake likes the same thing neither. You have to understand that the scriptures speak about every man, uh, every man looks at the day differently. You can esteem it that, uh, that they are uh, in his own uh, way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, John, I have revelation. I got the. I see you. This is uh, Romans 14 and 5. One man esteem it one day above another. Another man esteem it every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is one of it, but yeah, that was that's the, also uh, another one where a man doesn't like the same thing as other everybody it's has around. Yes, it's around. John. So there are different uh, types of spirits, man. But there was one spirit that shows that you are an Israelite. Okay, you need to learn to observe that. You know, to become a better teacher, man. Give me uh, Hebrews 4 and 12. I have a scripture here. Yeah, read. Really? This is uh, Sirach, chapter 37, and um, starting at verse 27. My son, prove thy soul in thy life, and see what is evil for it, and give not that unto it. For all things are not profitable for our man, neither hath every soul pleasure in everything. Yeah, neither hath every soul pleasure in everything. The one man likes rap, the other man likes jazz, the other man likes salsa, the other man likes, uh, hey, you have Jake's, they like fucking uh, rock, man, or heavy metal. A lot of gadites be listening to that garbage, man. I find it garbage, <laughs> so I say it's garbage, but that's my opinion, so don't be hurt if you like heavy metal. You like heavy metal? I heavy metal, but I like rock during the... Yeah, you have some rock that is beautiful. Like the part that, yeah. that was, that yeah, was yeah, yeah. Like the part back then. But now it's, it's quite You have some rock that is dope because uh, if Jake makes it, everything uh, can become dope. But that fucking satanic shit, hey, fuck, miss me with that shit, man. Miss but me, you have me. a lot of guys who be listening to that shit. It's true. They be listening to that, man. Wearing, uh, you know, this uh, punk type t shirts and shit like that. Okay? Yeah, two Jakes, but you're the only one waving at them. That's the funny thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not them waving. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you, yeah, okay. To you. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, to anyway, um, yeah. This is uh, Hebrews 4 and 12. For the word of Yahweh, is quick and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. And of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. See, so through the spirit, she 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 learned how to observe people by her study, by her physiology. Two dykes. Yeah, that I was looking. There was all by her <laughs> physiology study of uh, you no know, uh, the mind of men, people. She learned that by going to school. But we got this gift through the spirit. Because through the spirit, you can uh, learn, what does it say? Uh, uh, discern intents of the heart. Discern means being skilled in judging matters. Being skilled in judging and observing. And intents represents the characteristics, uh, character, characteristics and, um, and um, intentions. What the person is all about. Okay. And it's not a difficult thing to see that I'm a dominant person. <laughs> That's the, like shit. It doesn't take long to <laughs> it. That's how I speak. Okay. 
I'm trying to understand why they be walking around with this fucking uh, rainbow stuff. I see, I see all the dikes and 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 yeah, all sodomites today, right? Yeah, I see a lot of sodomites, man. Yeah. Yeah. It started off with a day, and now it's a freaking month. See, that's why this world, man, is going to blow smithereen. Sodom and Gomorrah. And it shall come to pass in that day that Yahweh shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Petrus and from Cush and from Elam and from Shinar and from Amman and from the Isles of the Sea. Yeah, man, so the Most High is going to recover okay, uh, the remnant of his people, man, that is left into all these places, man. Okay? Egypt. You have our people in Egypt. You know, you have our people amongst the Elamites. Okay? That's why I was looking at this guy at my gym like, hey, spirit is a bit different, you know what I'm saying? He might be uh, he might be an Israelite, but he was a straight-up Israelite, man. But he had the features of his mother. Like an Elamite. You know, you can see that skin tone they are they are brown also, but their brown is never the same as no, brown of Jake. Man. It's, it's, brown. it's like a strange brown. Yeah. Like, how yeah. do you create that brown? <laughs> I don't understand how you create that type of brown. Yeah, it's a whole different. It's a whole different brown. Man. Yeah, brownish. So, yeah, that's why they call it donker red. It's dark, dark white. Yeah, uh, this uh, comedian uh, skit. Here in Holland, these uh, coolies call them dark whites, and they call us niggers. <laughs> and, and then the people in the in the, in the skit be like, "What you talking about? You you brown too? I'm not brown. I'm dark white. Dark yeah. white. Dark white. What the fuck does that so He doesn't want to associate himself with dark skin. Yeah. He yeah. wants to associate himself with so I'm dark white. <laughs> That's stupid. But it's really like, oh, uh, this is how these coolies feel. Man. Mm -hmm. I have this coolie at my job, and uh, this cabo. This cabo is also an eye fooder. And uh, then the coolie is eye fooder, but he's with me. Mm -hmm. The coolie is with me. So the cabo came, and he told me, hey, in, uh, in uh, Port uh, Portuguese, he started he spoke Portuguese to me because he was also there. And he said, don't forget that this man is actually like a white man. He told me that. Because I, I speak openly, man. If mm -hmm. you want to snitch me, go ahead. But like the woman said, I'm dominant, so people watch out by snitching me. <laughs> you know, so I just speak openly, and I show you that I can give you information that you can hurt me with. But are you going to do it? Are you going to do it? I dare you. Do it. It's not carnal or I'm going to hurt him or something. But, you know, you can have a... Some kind of spirit towards men that they know not to fuck around with you, man. Mm -hmm. So then the cabo said, like, hey, watch out, watch out. He's, he's just like a white man. Don't think because he has a, a brown color that he likes you. And, uh, don't we know that in this truth? We know we know better than everyone in this truth that that's, that's the right. case. Never trust that enemy, man. That's right. Okay? Yeah. Second Peter chapter 3. And verse, um, verse 6, by the world that then was being overflowed, water perished. But the heavens and earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Yeah, so this, this world that we are in right now, okay, that was first overflown with water, is now reserved, meaning it's, it's just... Um, you know, it's, uh, it's on the clock, waiting to be destroyed by fire, man. Okay? Read. Verse 8, but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Chai. Yeah, three. I said three. Yeah, for the destruction. Uh... Okay. Yeah. I'm going to solve but this is Second Peter chapter two verse eight. I was already thinking. Huh? I have to read this again because I I think this is chapter three, and I was right. <laughs> no problem. Uh, 
um, verse 8, put it righteous men dwelling among them in seeing and hearing. I'm seven. I'm gonna go to this is Second Peter 2 and 4. For if the most high spared not the angels that sin, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into change of darkness, we reserve judgment. Yeah, man. So we as men upon this planet earth, we are reserved unto chains of darkness, man. We are actually we are actually um, set up to be extraterrestrial uh, men. Okay, like angels. That's why uh, you give Psalms 82. You have scriptures too? Uh, I had Romans. Uh, listening. Yeah, I had a few weeks ago, and you also told me to hold Psalms uh, uh, 104. Uh, yeah. then, the woman then the woman came. Give me, uh, <laughs> give me that for that. I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. See? So we, as children of Israel, are gods, man. We are like gods. We are like powers. But we have been put into a lower state. Okay, Even when we mess, messed up uh, in uh, Genesis chapter 6, we laid with the daughters of men, we messed up also. The most are like, see, you diluting, you diluting your whole Pureness. Now you're gonna die being 120 years old. See? Now you're gonna die early, younger. Meanwhile, we we supposed to, you know, previously we got like 800, 900, 700. Methuselah was 969. Yeah, uh, uh, 96. Yeah. 90, yeah. No, 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 69. 69. 69, 69 yeah. Yeah. I'm tripping because of the Dutch, right? 969 years old. Okay, that's almost a thousand years. That's a thousand years, man. See, so that was our strength and our firmness, but because we said we became less, uh, less uh, strong, man. Mm -hmm. Can't weaken, I just put it like that. Less strong. What is less strong? <laughs> Can't weaken. <laughs> okay, go. Um, what is, uh, was it finished? I mean, you were reading, but I got a priest of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah to 82. Oh, yeah, 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 okay, yeah, let me read yeah, verse seven. Yeah. Okay, read uh, Psalms 82, verse 7. But ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Shall die mm -hmm. like men. That's the what the most I did to us, he brought us low. Okay, we were reserved from the chains of darkness, which is these weak, weak ass bodies, man. Jake, Jake might look all buff and stuff like that, but he can get sick too, man. They eat the wrong thing, see what's going to happen to you. He shit water, man. Yeah, man. See? But in some ways, you have to understand your body is also fighting a disease and a bacteria. So when you get diarrhea, that means your body wants your to body push all that shit out. Bacteria, they, um, they um, uh, uh, I say that? attach themselves to, the, to your stomach and your intestines. So a good thing to use is oregano oil. Oregano oil. If you don't mix oregano oil, like sometimes you put oregano oil in tea, right? Mm -hmm. If you don't mix it good, it touches your lips yeah. and it freaking burns you. Yeah. <laughs> you like, ah, oh, the next morning you see your lip is all um, yeah. sour. Yeah, yeah. All, a little uh, bit crusty. <laughs> yeah, crusty shit because of the oregano oil. Yeah. But that same effect it has in your stomach and intestines, which burns those bacteria, man. Mm, that's true. Okay, I had a stomach uh, flu also, not a stomach flu, like. I have the crazy bacteria in my in my uh, in my stomach, man, mm -hmm. which led towards my kidneys and shit like that. That I couldn't sleep. I couldn't sleep a certain way. I had to lay a certain way. My leg up and shit like that. Then I would feel comfortable. I, I didn't feel the stinks. But if I moved, I got the stinks again, throwing up and shit, shit like that. To the point that I had lack of sleep. I couldn't sleep for three, four days. Mm -hmm. I had to sleep in the couch, sitting straight. Sitting straight, but then when you sit straight, at a certain point, you know, when you doze off, you go, go. Lie down. And then I feel it again, and I sit like, ah. Yo, that was hell, man. But the oregano oil with the uh, with the ginger, it clears you up. Yeah, the water for that. Yeah, man. Yeah, and man. then, uh, like I said to the brother also, I have tincture. But the tincture, if you, if you drink tinctures, a lot of these tinctures are... Uh, a lot of these tinctures are 
uh, made with uh, uh, 80 proof vodka, which mm -hmm. is the best alcohol to extract herbs with. The, uh, the potency of the herbs, which potency, potent means power. So with, with the 80 proof grain vodka, you can extract the potency of the herbs and then it sits in the alcohol. But if you're sick and you don't eat, you're not supposed to put that alcohol on your stomach because it's going to create irritations and it's going to be even more difficult for you to eat. So that's why you have two options. Boil, boil water and put the herbs, let it rinse in the herb, in the water, in the boiled water. Or a, a, more, a more powerful uh, approach is with the tincture mm -hmm. because you really extract everything from the herbs, you see? But if you have like uh, struggles with your stomach, it's better to drink tea than to take the, the tincture mm -hmm. because the alcohol is like uh, very strong in the stomach. Just a quick uh, advice to his brothers. Okay, we are not in the time of sickness now, really, because it's summer. That's why Esau is also like, yeah, freedom. Y'all can go and do whatever you want again. But he's just waiting for the right moment, man. That's right. He lied and wait like a freaking, freaking, freaking snake, man. He waits. He covers himself in the grass. And Very good. When it's time, he snatches you, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Hey, and can I say something? Uh, I, uh, somebody sent me a message today from uh, England that uh, uh, Bojo, he said that there is a new variant. Uh, they call it Delta. And uh, uh, he said because uh, the the younger people who are not vaccinated, it's their fault, and that is what they're gonna play also over here. Like in the in the in the in the fall, they're gonna say it. the people who are not vaccinated, they are the cause of uh, that. There is gonna be a lockdown again, you know. And so that uh, now they're gonna create uh, gonna them. On the children, yeah, because a lot of uh, parents don't want to vaccinate their children. Yeah, because they say the government themselves say children are not vulnerable you know that's why children during the lockdown they was allowed to go training mm -hmm. and stuff like that under uh, what was it well, 17 years old we need 17 years old stuff like that but now they're coming with the alpha delta beta you know mm -hmm. gamma because they use greek uh, alphabet alphabet to yeah. name these different mm -hmm. that's what i heard today from the brother from germany Okay, that they that they call these different variants uh, after the uh, Greek alphabet. Greek alphabet is true. That's right. Okay, so let's go back. Um, uh, yeah, back a second. No, 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 read that. Because you're gonna read the same thing as is written in Peter's about the angels that lost their state in Actually, yeah, it's a it's a link. It's the same because it's the same thing, but we can read it later. But read this first. Second Peter chapter two and verse five. <clears throat> and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, a person, a preacher, righteousness. Okay. Bring in no. the blood upon no. the world. It looks like, it looks like him, huh? So, <laughs> so um, spared not the old world. Yeah. He saved Noah, the eight person, a preacher, righteousness. Bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. Okay, okay. Yeah, All right, I said, yeah, we're gonna read it. This Jew, he was angry. And I'm not gonna read you anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's all I'm like you. No, when the Memorize it. I know what, what you want. Okay. I'm no, no, no. I was not referring to myself, brother. <laughs> I was referring to Mr. Pete. Mr. Pete said uh, that he's not going to read anymore then. What? Yeah, man. That's the that's uh, fucking uh, holding a grudge. Holding a grudge because uh, you can't bring out the precept that you want. You're not going to uh, read at all anymore. He was standing like this. Fuck it. Then. Yeah, man. Back in the world, smoking weed. And I told him, man. I hope we get out of it, but hey, it's not my, uh, not my, not my uh, uh, yeah, this is a true one, verse six, and the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their 
but left their own habitation. He had preserved an everlasting chains on the darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Okay, break it down. Yeah, God, so, uh, like in the book of uh, Genesis 6, it speaks on how the, um, the sons of God, they mingled themselves with the daughters of men. You know, so we, by doing that, we were uh, angels, we were as angels here upon earth. But we diluted, as the brother said, we diluted the, the, the strength of our, of our uh, nation, actually. Because look look when you go lay down with one of these heathen nations, you know, you see that the, the, the pigmentation, the strength leaves a bit because it gets a, a bit diluted. But the spirit stays the same, you know, and the same way. The angels, they left their first estate, where the greatness, you know, they were uh, men of renown, great men, uh, warriors and stuff like that. But then uh, they left their first habitation and he reserved everlasting change on the darkness, which is this flesh, unto the judgment of the great day. Which is speaking about, just speaking about the second Peter 3, what we're reading about, that when the second destruction is going to come, you know, first destruction was with water, second destruction is with fire, then we will leave finally leave these uh, chains of darkness and we're going to become not uh, terrestrial uh, beings anymore but extraterrestrial because when Yahweh Shai comes with his glory he's going to be you know in his uh, glorious body and we also are going to be in his glorious body and not in these chains of darkness which forget which get diseases which uh, you, 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 you go in um, in the lusts you know because this flesh lets you go off you know and that's why in Galatians it speaks uh, about fight the flesh and uh, give more unto the spirit. Was Galatians five and sixteen. So we are reserved unto these bodies until the day of judgment, because during the day of judgment, our uh, our physical appearance is going to change. Okay, in the twinkling of an eye, you can grab that First Corinthians fifteen. You have it. Uh, Philippians 3 and the last verse. Philippians 3 21. So change your foul body. You know, the child is going to change your foul bodies. Which is, is change of darkness are the foul bodies. Why is it darkness? You have something in mind that you want to do, but your body just doesn't want to work with you. You want to run far. Your, your body uh, holds up in some, some days you go jogging and your breathing is all good but then your feet start hurting your knees start hurting, your hip bone starts hurting, your lower back you're like, ah, oh, what the fuck is this? But actually you feel good you feel good that day and you feel like I feel like I can run a marathon then you start running ah, pains everywhere, fucking weak ass body man, what the hell is this man okay you can you can fall off of, a, off of a bar seat and break your damn ankle, man. And then the bar seat is, you know, the to get off a bar seat is like this high, man. Clack, break your ankle. See, these bodies is weak as hell, man. And it's a chain of it's a chain of darkness. It's nothing. It's nothing good about these bodies. Man. That it may be fashion. Like unto his glorious body. Yeah, so we want our body to be fashioned unto the Lord to how shy when he comes to return. When he, uh, when he comes to return. When he returns, he comes back. His glorious body. Fashioned like his glorious body. That is what the Lord is to do. If he, uh, yeah. This is uh, so spit, uh, 17 verse 15. As for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I wake with thy likeness. Yeah. That's right, man. Uh, back in Philippians 3 and 21. According to the working, whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Yeah. So uh, that's what happens when the Lord Jehovah Shai comes back. He's going to subdue everything unto himself. He's going to change his brothers his back into glorious bodies, man. So that's the day of judgment and we are not going to be in these uh, chains of darkness no more. Okay? We are going to be in our glorious bodies, man. The bodies that are reserved for us. Okay? Vessels. You know, it's amazing to think, like, oh, I'm going to be tall. Tall like this, like this, uh, like this billboard. 
you know? It's all like this. But if you want, you make yourself short. But really, what I want, I want these hammers to be to be tall. And then I'm, I'm, then I'm and then I'm short. short. And I, you know when when the, uh, let's say let's say the hammer is big, big as that pillar over there. You know the hammer is big as that pillar over there. And then, you know, to speak to him, you um, no no no, you fly up, oh. fly up to him, get in his face, Explode. listen up, Grab him. listen up, hey. That is God, man. That is God. That's what they show you in, um, like, God of War and stuff like that. Zeus, you know, Kratos. Yo, they they bring down whole giant yeah, animals, man. man. You just what do you know about it? Yes. God of War doesn't have uh, uh, Xbox. Doesn't have what God of War. YouTube. <laughs> and I, I watched the tutorial or how you know how dope it is, right? Yeah. Climbs on the arm. Yeah, and man. He and then he punches, punches, punches the the Titan. Beam. Boom! The type goes like, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. Powerful, man. That's dope. God of War, man. Dope, dope game. Dope, um, no series, man. Because, um, in this, I think it's God of War 2. He loses all his strength. So then you fight to get all his strength back. That is dope. That was PlayStation 2 or 3, I believe, man. No, PlayStation 3. PlayStation 2 is God of War 1. Try to get your strength back. Shit. Spear of destiny. There you get the spear of destiny. That's where my love towards spears came, man. Big ass spear. That spear was able to shoot like a beam, a purple beam, man. Mm -hmm. You know? Heavy, man. You know what my uh, weapon is going to be, right? The one that I showed you from Warframe. The, the uh, pole with the two. Uh, uh, what do you call it? And blades, blades, yeah. Two bladed pole. Yeah. Man. And when you read the inscription, you told me about it. It's a, it's an instrument that God used. Didn't even uh, see that. Man. That's right. That's right. God's a good God. yeah, And you know why I said like um, we can uh, we can change our height because of uh, the powers that the Lord Jehovah Shai had. He could change the appearance of the tree. He could speed up the time for the tree. Okay, he could transfigure. Give me that. Transfiguration. I was busy to search for that. You know where you're staying? I was already busy. I was busy to search for this. And with that same power, you can form a woman in the way that you want. Yes. See? But, you know, you can also be like, ah, I'll just grab another one. Yeah. You know? Leave her the way she is, grab another one. You, know? you don't have to wear no damn wig. We, I can make your hair straight for you today, tomorrow, just for the day. Just for the day. Yeah, man. Three. Matthew chapter 17 and verse 1. And after six days, Yahweh Shai taken Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringing them up into the high mountain apart. He was transfigured before them, and his face is showing as the sun. And his raiment was white as the light. Yeah, trans means means to change. Figure means uh, uh, appearance. So his appearance was changed. Okay, he took his um, uh, Yahushai turned into his glorious body himself, and he split up. Because what happened? Moses and Elijah also appeared. Come, verse three, and behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. Yeah, true transfiguration that happened. Okay, now a lot of these cartoons and animes, you know, show you that a certain power is to split up your body. Mm -hmm. Multiply. Okay, you don't know which one is the origin. Mm -hmm. Now you have certain cells that can multiply also. Yes. Cells, if you if they get hurt, whoop, they mm -hmm. multiply. Whoop, whoop, mm -hmm. cell, cell division. That is just basically what the Lord did, man. Mm -hmm. He divided his cells and changed the a molecular, a molecular structure of of the bodies that he created mm -hmm. into Moses and Elijah. See, have the word transfigured. Yeah, this is uh, the word transfigured in the Greek is uh, metamorpho, and the outline of biblical usage is to change into another form, to transform, 
transfigured. It says Yahweh Shai's appearance was changed, was resplendent with the Where does it say that? No, oh, in the blue, 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 blue. I was already thinking like <laughs> on the at the mount at the no, 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 no. I was like, does it say that? No. It says Yahweh Shai's appearance was changed, or was resplendent with divine brightness on the Mount of Transfiguration. Yeah. That's right, that's right. Change, transform, yeah. transform dance. So, Transform is the same thing. Mm -hmm. Trans means to change. Metamorphosis. Form, form is is your uh, your appearance, your state, your physical body. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the Lord Shai did that. So he changed his form. Now in the kingdom, you're gonna have that power, because the Lord Shai said, "What the things that I do now, you are able to do them uh, even greater things than these." So whatever Shai did when he was on the earth, we're gonna be able to do, man. But your power is not going to be greater in the kingdom than the Lord Yahweh Shai. Yeah. Yahweh Shai is going to be in his ultimate form, man. You see? The yeah. ultimate form, man. That's why I like Jiren. I like Jiren, man. Because eventually, yes, he got beaten. But how many, how many episodes did it take for him to even be touched a little bit, man? This goes into his meditation form. Meditation form. Hey, yo, Jiren is crazy, man. And I like Vegeta. Jiren yeah. and Vegeta. I don't, I'm not about Goku. He just gets his powers because of the writer of the script. Mm -hmm. But Vegeta gets it through hardcore training. Mm -hmm. Jiren gets it through meditation and suffering from the past. For the brothers that know uh, Dragon Ball Super, he went through a lot of things. He, got, he saw his parents get killed in front of his eyes, man. So that drove him to become a mm -hmm. powerful being like that. See, that is a respectable thing that I like. I like to see warriors, man. Brawly. Yeah, Brawly. Yeah, I'm not really about <laughs> I'm about Jiren. I would like to see them fight. Jiren and Brawly. That would be crazy. Because Jiren, Brawly is out of control. Yeah, he's out of control. That's why I don't really like Hulk neither. Because he's mm. out of control. Yeah. He lets his anger take hold of yeah. him. Okay, remember when I had this discussion like, uh, who would you rather be, Thor or Hulk? And all the brothers were like, Hulk, Hulk, Hulk. I said, I choose Thor, man. I don't want to have his uh, physical appearance, but, no, I, but I said, he is training himself to become king, mm -hmm. to take the place of his father as a king, a powerful king that rules the whole universe. You see? Yeah, yeah. So in that, in that way, spiritual way, I would rather be like him. Because Hulk is what? A freaking experiment <laughs> that doesn't just get angry and loses control and beats everyone up. Strength is dope, but I'd rather be him. See? So, you know, sometimes you, you throw that in there, in there, you know, to speak about it with brothers and to see where their mind is at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Gonna, you know, with this quote in it, that uh, the anger that he has is the most high anger. You know, he's going to put that thing Spirit upon you. Wow. And that's his indignation. Yeah. Oh, the scriptures speak about temperance. The battery still good. Yeah, yeah. The brother says, "Khan, Khan, I'm I'm ready for my Dragon Ball Z power." Yeah, man. <laughs> we all are, man. Hey, we can't wait, man. So, hey, gosh, you have the thing that we were the fresh. So the thing that uh, we was going into. Uh, just now was, you know, spiritual power. So what I want to go into is that we're going to be changed into, uh, into new creatures now. So yeah. uh, anyone can grab... Um, I grab first Corinthians. Uh, Ezekiel. First Corinthians, chapter 15. Starting with verse, uh, verse 39. It says, all flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another another of fishes, and another of birds. It shows you that creatures that are created by the Heavenly Father, they all have you know, given a certain certain type of flesh. This means that they're not able to mix. You know, the fish are made as fish, the fowls of the air are made as the fowls of the air, and the men are created according to the men. You know, the men are for yeah, so we just had oh, that. Uh, people are, 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 yeah. So, yeah, I understand. I'm sorry. Go on. Um, pretty much. 
There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. So you have celestial, which is heaven. It's yellow. Heaven. Heaven. Yellow means heaven. Yeah. So that goes into uh, having a spiritual body. And you have the terrestrial one, which are made from the earth. Terra goes back to earth. We were created from, we were created from the earth. Second Corinthians 5 verse 1. So we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, a house not made with him, uh, eternal in the heavens. So if our, our, our earthly body dies, we go back to the Heavenly Father, there we have a spiritual body as well. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, read on in first church. There, uh, verse 41, there is one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon and another glory of the stars, for one star differeth from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption, it is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor and uh, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. You know, because the resurrection of the dead is is uh, the renewing of the bodies of the of the man of the Lord? Man. Okay, now some man might die in this truth. Their bodies go to the grave, and and they are corrupt. Their bodies are unclean. They are corrupt. Okay, but it's gonna turn into incorruption, like it says. So also the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption, put into the ground in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. So when uh, the the scripture says. Uh, the death in Yahushai shall shall uh, rise first. They're gonna be beamed up first, okay. And then when they are being beamed up, they are gonna be uh, incorrupt. Which in we looked it up and means not, okay, not corrupt. Meaning the body, the physical appearance going to change. Okay, uh, it is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in in glory because the dishonor we got because we started mingling with these. Uh, with these daughters of men, okay, we turn, we got these bodies, and that is a dishonor up till up until this day, man. It's not something to, to be glorified in in your body. So I also brought out the point about these bodybuilders. You, you, yo, you can you can <laughs> you can be using both, but you can uh, fuck up your ankle uh, still by your fucking uh, uh, yeah. Also, with these bodybuilders, once they tear a muscle, it's done for them. Man. Or singers, singers, when their throat, something fucks up with their throat. Yeah, mm -hmm. man. They're done, man. Their career mm -hmm. is over. It's good to hear. He's done skipping. Apostle Kabar brought that out in a video uh, recently. Uh, she used to be this very, very good singer. But then all of a sudden, she didn't care no more about her voice. She went to do a tour in Australia. She fucked up, you know. And eventually, her fans were, like, disappointed with the, the 165 euros that they paid for a concert, you know. So they were like... It's done for, you know, so showing you that once that talent that you had is done with, you're basically good for nothing, you know, same with the bodybuilding. When you're not, yeah, when you're not upholding your talent, yeah. after a few, uh, few years, you're done, man. And even with bodybuilding, you will be done in a few weeks, man. Your muscles are gone, man. So Ronnie Coleman, yeah. He had to constantly operate his back, you know, because just the heavy weights that he was lifting. Mm -hmm. But he even went to the furthest that where no man had gone before. But yeah, this is what you gotta lift with afterwards. Yeah. But he's back in the gym, man. Eh? Yeah, he, he has to. Oh, so he recovered, man. He was freaking on crutches like he couldn't walk no more. Yeah, man. he had to learn to walk again because of just the operation. Yeah, but back. now he's back in the gym. Because that's his life, man. Yeah, you see? Mm -hmm. Now that's, that's the mentality of a Jake, man. Of a real. A diligent Jake concerning what he wants. He said, I read it. If I could go back, I would do it again because this was my life and I lived for it. Done. He fucking do it again. But he, he had to, um, he is a man like everyone is a man. And you have to um, see, um, or you know, I have to undergo the consequences. You have to undergo the consequences of, um, of that lifestyle, man. You see, you're going to get hurt at the long run. On the long run, it is sown in dishonor. Verse forty-three. It is sown in dishonor and raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. Beautiful man. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. 
where eventually we're going to, this, 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 this earthly body we're going to have is going to turn into a, a spiritual body, man. Having powers, being immortal, and we're going to go into the world. You know? It is sown a natural body, is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body, and there is a spiritual body. So, Slakia. There is also two resurrections. You have the resurrection of the dead. When Yahushai comes back, the dead are going to be resurrected. But also resurrection, meaning going to the heavens. When you go to the heavens, you get your spiritual body. See? But when you are being beamed up, you get you get a spiritual body too. Spiritual body that has power, man. An extraterrestrial body. There is natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written. The first man, Adam, was made the living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. This last Adam was the Holy Spirit. Albeit, that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural. And afterward, that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. Because that's what's going to happen. The Lord is going to come down from heaven, man, with a shout. Okay? Who is he that uh, ascended and descended? Let me see. It's the Lord Jehovah Shai. Yeah, man. Albeit. Uh, verse 48. As, as is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. You have the earthly people, it's us right now. You also have the angels with that, which have that heavenly body. Eventually, we're going to receive that. Uh, well, we're going to receive that semi heavenly body because we're also going to be able to. We're going to have the perks of the heavenly yeah. body, which is infinite energy, but uh, put in inside of the of the earthy body. Because we're going to be just flesh. We're going to be flesh, but flesh that is not able to be corrupted. So the most I tapped into our uh, into our flesh in the time of Adam and made us die the deaths. That goes all the way back to Genesis. Okay? Seeing you listen to your wife, and your wife went to the serpent, which I told her not to do. You shall die the deaths of man. And in the sweat of your, of your flesh, you shall uh, uh, till the ground. That was the curse that was set upon Adam, and in that wise also upon all of us. Okay, so we have to die. Now, what, the, what did you say again? Oh, yeah. So, uh, the most I tapped into us and made our bodies weaker. And, and basically opened doors for sicknesses and infirmities to come in. But that, um, that, uh, that extraterrestrial body, which we are going to get, is not going to have that it's going to be immune to all those things. Not able to be corrupted. Verse 49. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. What I just said. You see, we're going to have those perks of the heavenly in our earthy body. But also, now we have the earthy body. But when we die, we have the heavenly body. We have that one and we have that one. There's a heavenly body waiting for us when we die. There's also an earthy body, which we have now when we walk upon the earth. Okay? So this chapter goes into, you know, the, the different types of body, different types of flesh, but also it goes into the salvation. Okay? Now, uh, now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of the Most High, neither doth corruption. Corruption inherit the incorrupt. Yeah, it's like an inherit incorruption. So we, with our earthly body, with this flesh, we're not able to receive those promises that were made unto our forefathers. If we don't, you know, if our body doesn't change, then doesn't we need to be. Uh, if it doesn't change, if it doesn't change. So we need to become immortal. We need to become incorrupt. Yep. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. But we shall all be changed, God. So, not everybody is gonna gonna, gonna die you know, on this side. But we're all gonna be changed. Eventually, our whole nation is gonna be changed. Yeah. See, uh, that is the deliverance. Okay. Have a precept on that. When the Lord, uh, who everyone calls Jesus Christ, comes back, there are gonna be men upon this earth who are going to be delivered. 
You see? They are going to be delivered, man. So the sleeping refers to being dead. Not everyone is going to die. But eventually, all are going to be changed because the men that die on this side and come back into the kingdom are going to have their body. Too. These these females are going to have their spiritual body too, man. Okay? They're going to have their uh, extraterrestrial body too in the kingdom. Okay? But there's going, going to be a level of strength also in that. Okay? Height. Yahushai was the tallest among all of us. So you already know what type of, what type of body he's going to have, man. Okay? And we are going to know each other's strength, man. But hey, you know, for me, it would be dope to to um, to spar just like how Goku and Vegeta are sparring, man. See? Just spar, man. And oftentimes, when you see them spar, they are in their normal form. Mm -hmm. They are not even in their same yeah, form. They fight in their spar in their normal form to, to be on the same level. Because if they power up, then it's gonna be like, oh mm. shit, okay. Destruction yeah, 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 man. Yeah. And and uh, there has never been a winner between Vegeta and Goku. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, so man. They fought multiple times, but there it was never like, okay, he won. Mm -hmm. It was never settled. Mm -hmm. you see. If a preset. Yeah, this is uh, Matthew twenty-two verse thirty. For in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of Yahweh in heaven. So, um, here Yahweh was asked, you know, concerning the wife that was, uh, uh, the, the wife of a certain man, he had brothers, but she never uh, gave, gave any children to the man. The man died, and she was given unto the other man. You know, because our law explains us that, you know, when the man dies without having children, brother needs to uh, produce children for him in order for things to continue, you know, but this never happened and they all died. So Mary Hawashi explains, uh, giving an answer like, whose wife shall she be in the resurrection? But but, was just thinking, yeah. So when she die, go to the heavens, you know, you're like the angels. The angels don't have sex. So in the resurrection, you know, you neither marry nor are given in marriage. That's right. That's why the scripture says, glory of Terrestrial is one, and the glory of the celestial is another. Celestial body has an infinite energy. It doesn't have to sleep nothing. But the terrestrial body gets weak, tired, you know, lack of concentration. But what is his glory? Eat nice food, okay, have sex, pleasure. See? The, the celestial doesn't have that. So like the brother also explained earlier, that we're going to get, you know, the best of both. Exactly. We're gonna get the best, best of both worlds, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. Um, that you have, huh? uh, according that from all Israel is gonna be saved. Uh, this is uh, Romans uh, chapter eleven, verse uh, twenty-six, and so uh, all Israel shall be saved, as it is written: "There shall come out of Zion the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob." Know, according to the scripture, that on this side a lot of our people have to die, you know. But once in the kingdom, our nation is going to be re established with the uh, those through those people that made it, you know, those that received salvation. So, as one of uh, you know, I don't know who it was, but he said basically, not sec Israelites, yeah, yeah. Kingdom, <laughs> Elder Malcolm always said that, yeah, not sec Israelites, and yeah. through that, our whole nation is going to be delivered. Man. You know, all Israel is going to be saved, right? Uh, back in Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 15 and 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. See that? So here it shows you like, hey, also in the in the, mm -hmm. in the resurrection, which, which is physically going up into the heavens to enter into the chariots, that is also going to be a, a resurrection. Man. So you have two types. Resurrection of the dead, you know, by going to the spiritual realm of receiving your heavenly body, but also res resurrection of the in the last trumpet, you know, in judgment day. In a moment, in the twinkling of the eye, of an eye, at the last trump, where the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. God, so as fast as you can blink with your eyes, 
that's how fast our body's going to change. And I remember a dream from a brother. You know, he was both beamed up with his wife. And his wife, if I'm correct, she looked like, you know, uh, uh, Eden, you know. But as soon as he blinked, he saw her being turned into a dark skin Israelite man. You know, as fast as he could blink, she was changed. And that's how fast we're going to be changed as well. That's when we're going to receive that incorruptible body, man. That uh, spiritual body, you know, that, that's going to be incorruptible. We're not going to, be, we're not going to die. His no wife more. had it. His wife uh, looks like Eden. And she had a dream that uh, she saw the kingdom and she was like a black woman. So from that point. Yeah, because we're going to get our color back. Yeah. Ain't no light skin, dark skin nonsense in the kingdom. Man. Okay. Now some brothers might like uh, like uh, light skin uh, uh, females. And you'd be like, oh, JK ain't going to be light skin. Well, do you think with these seekers? We will have hidden females in the kingdom. Man. You actually, I have to say, hidden women. Because in the kingdom, they're going to serve you well. Because what is a woman? A woman is a, a, a female servant. She's going to serve you well. And I know a lot of these hidden, hidden females, they can't wait to serve you, man. That's right. You know? They're already begging you right now. Just take me. <laughs> take me. Just take me. Especially these mm -hmm. women. They don't give a shit that you, have, uh, that you have a wife, that you live together, whatever, man. They want to be with you, man. Because they want you to see. Mm -hmm. Never forget that, man. These females look at you and they imagine what, what it would be like to have babies with you. It's the perfect specimen. It's the perfect specimen. Yesterday or today, I spoke about that. Yeah. 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 Always checks, you know, what, what baby she would produce. Mm -hmm. from strong. the beginning stages, man. They are hardwired to do that. Mm -hmm. we, we don't we look at the outward appearance like, okay, yeah, you can fix this, okay, I can work with that. But then the moment she looks, if, if uh, everything is symmetrical, you know, without even knowing it, she analyzes it. Hey, she's going to be a good body, bump strong, okay, the eyes are great. Genetics. Yeah, genetics, strong, genetics. But that's the same thing, that's the same thing as, um, as animals do, the man shows off for the woman, whether it's a bird or whatever, shows how great his feathers, feathers is. is and, the then, and then a female bird is like, hmm, yeah, our babies will be beautiful because uh, because of you. Mm -hmm. You see? So you show off what you have, just like our man takes a woman on a date to show her that he can provide for her. Yep. Animals do what? They bring food to the, to the female. So he shows it like, hey, you see, I'm strong I can, enough. I can take I care of you. And what, what man has the woman? The man that is the strongest among lions, the strongest lion. He conquers the, the pride, man. Okay. Alpha, the male. alpha male. Okay. So that's why I told this female that was here, I told her the desire of a woman is to have children. And she was like, I already saw her face like she didn't agree. Because nowadays you have females, they say they don't want children. Mm -hmm. It's true, yeah. Because why? They have whatever they want and uh, they don't want to be in that situation. But actually, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. exactly. But actually, desire, the desire of a female, when she feels, starts dealing with a man, it's like, hmm, what kind of children would we make? This is uh, the book of Haggai, 2 verse 8. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, is mine to say, to our power post. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than of the former, said the our power host. And in this place will I give peace, said the power of God. You can uh, see this precept too far because it can both resemble you know, this, this, this kingdom as we know it. You know, the latter one is going to be more beautiful than the, than the former one, meaning that the kingdom is going to be better than what you see right now. People think that this is it, man. You're, you're gravely mistaken because what the most has laid for us in the kingdom is going to far exceed whatever you, you can imagine. Super 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 but you can far exceed whatever you, you can imagine on this side, right? But it also means that, you know, our body is a house and the latter one is going to be better than the former one, meaning our body is going to be changed into something that's going to far exceed what we're capable of right now doing, uh, what, what we are doing right now. Because right, body goes back to the Latin word bodic, bodic goes into house. 
It's just a, it's just the habitation for your spirit, man. Most of the created spirits and habitations for those spirits, man, which is your body. That's why the most ever serve re refers to your body as a temple also. Okay? And together we, we create uh, Yahweh as building. Okay, first Corinthians chapter three. We don't? So first uh first Corinthians fifteen and fifty two again. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. So in the last trump, you know, goes into when the Hawaii comes back, Hawaii allows these missiles to be shot, you know, towards America for the majority, you know, so that, uh, you know, there's need for us to be changed and be involved in the church. Sure. Okay. This is uh, Hosea chapter 6, verse 1. Come and let us return unto the Lord, for he had torn, and he will heal us, yet he smitten, and he will bind us up. So, so the most high, he basically destroyed our nation, but he's also going to bring us together, make it better than before. Yeah, so physically, but also spiritually. We got torn apart, broken down as a nation. But also we've been placed in these in these corruptible bodies. But he's going to heal us, man. A great glory and make us greater than ever before, man. Mm. That's, that's why I just read in Haggai 2. It says that the, ladder house, the glory of the latter house is going to be greater than the first. You know, because we, before we were mere men, we were giants, we were uh, gods. But now we are going to have that extraterrestrial body. So that's going to be even greater than the history that we read about in uh, Genesis up until uh, yeah. the magic. But the latter house represents the kingdom. The house represents the kingdom. So the former house is where we are living in right now. This world, how it is right now. And the latter house is going to be the kingdom. Okay, so the latter house is going to be greater than the former house. Which in this house, in this kingdom, you have things that are being glorified. Okay, planes. Uh, uh, how do you call these things? Uh, submarines. Being able to be underwater very deep. Okay. Being able to fly, jetpacks, Ferraris, Lamborghini, you know Lamborghini. what I'm saying? But the glory of the latter house hey, is going to be far beyond that. You are going to be able to fly. You are going to be able to breathe underwater and all these things, man. The most I created animals to be able to breathe underwater or to be under underwater for massive amounts of time, man. You know, whales, man, they're underwater for hours, man. Then when they feel like it, they come up and, and uh, you know, they have lungs, man. Mm -hmm. Now, um, fishes have gills. Okay, so the most, uh, what do certain snakes have? Snakes have the ability to see infrared. Okay. You have certain different eyesights. You have the echolocation, mm -hmm. you know, be able to aid. Hey, all these abilities, the most I can grab them and put, put them in, inside of you, man. David Fox, right? Power or something like that. Yeah. that you can take the uh, elements of one of from, from an animal, and then that's your your power. Mm -hmm. He had torpedo so shrimp. Yeah, he can uh, charge, supercharge himself, and then uh, release, yeah. man. And, and all he said things. he's the smallest animal, but he has the most force. His hit, you know, creates a spark on the yeah. water, man. It's crazy, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Same thing goes for ants. Ants can what? hundred times carry their own body oh, weight? Body weight. That's crazy, mm -hmm. man. Mm -hmm. See, if we would be able to do that, yo, you could lift up a lot of We could be able to lift up yeah. this thing like... Yeah, man, like nothing. Which is concrete, man. Yeah, man. It's a concrete block. Who lift it up with one arm? Do whatever, man. That strength. We're going to be more powerful than uh, than ants in their, in, their, uh, in their state that they are mm -hmm. in, man. They can carry a hundred times. I don't know what the exact measurement is, but can, can we going to be able yeah, to man. carry whatever, man? You know, we're going to be able to carry it with our minds, even. You yeah, know, man. Like uh, telekinesis. Mm -hmm. Lift up something with your mind. With your mind. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, man. First, uh, first Corinthians 15 and... Uh, for this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. 
So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, that is swallowed up in victory. So we have need to be changed in order to attain those things that are made up for us. You know, but what does what comes with that? You know, in order to achieve that, we also need to be given the last ten commandments in our inward parts. Because otherwise, death is not, you know, going to be swallowed up in victory. We need to be able to uh, not sin no more. You know, that's right. That's what the most high is going to establish new coming with us for these people's starting uh, in and eight. And I remember brother said this, but death is already swallowed up for us. Because we don't fear death no more. Being in this truth makes you not fear death no more. Because you know where you're going to go when you die in this truth. Some brothers even died, want to die right now, man, you know. Because we sick and tired of this place. Yeah, man. Not really desire to die, but, but to die wouldn't be a bad thing. So death doesn't have power over us no more. Fear of death doesn't have power over us no more. Because we walk in the ways of Yahweh Shai. You see? Just like the uh, Paul said, you know, it wasn't straight between two, you know, to die, to be with Yahweh Shai, or to be here, you know, and basically, you know, preach the gospel, which was more needful for us, you know. So right. he, he laid up uh, himself as a sacrifice for, for his people. So, There's a Revelation 21, verse 4. And Yahweh, Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai, shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And this is that speaking about the slave. So the most that's going to lift up all this curse from us, and we're going to be set in that, uh, you know, that state. You know, no more need for us to cry, no more need for us to sorrow, you know, no more need for us to be afraid. You know, where do we go? No more needs for us to go to our enemies for the wonderful things. We're gonna be the we're gonna be the head man. This nation's gonna be still. Back of first Corinthians fifteen. Uh yeah, I want the uh, This is Hebrews eight verse eight. For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come, said Jehovah, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. And with who did the most I find fault? With us. Why? Because we had been given that, you know, that wicked heart that was given unto Adam after he, he sinned. You know. So uh, the wickedness still abode because of Adam. We transgressed the last set of the commandments of the, of the Heavenly Father. You know. So there was need for, for us to receive the better covenant, which most is going to give us when Yahweh Shai, you know, comes back. Uh, 30, 30, 30, 30. This is uh, Jeremiah 31, verse 31. Behold, the days come, saith Jehovah, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I had I was a husband unto them, saith Jehovah, Ba'ashem, Yahushai, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, said Jehovah, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their power and they shall be my people. So, as we know, according to the scriptures, we know that Adam you know, was given the law of the commandments in an oral fashion. You know, then the law of the commandments were given unto Moses. We were able to read them and see, like, hey, I'm going off. You know, I need to, to do better, man. But eventually, the most I put uh, the most of the commandments in our inward parts, man, meaning that we're not uh, going to be able to say no more. Therefore, as it says in First Corinthians chapter 15 and 54, the death is swallowed up in victory, man. You know, it's not going to be immortal, man. What is the wages of uh, uh, death? And what does it immortal mean? Him. Goes back to end, which is not, mm -hmm. not mortal. Yeah. Um. Uh, 
says it's uh, Jeremiah 31, verse 34. And they shall not, uh, so like that, they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know ye Yahweh, for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, said Jehovah, for I I will forgive their iniquity and I remember their sin no more. So what we're doing right now is we're trying to teach our neighbor, trying to bring them back to the Heavenly Father, and make them to get to know the Heavenly Father. But once, you know, the last 30 commandments of the numbered part, the whole nation of Israel is going to know the ways of the Heavenly Father. Man. Ezekiel 36, uh, you can, uh, start at 24, I'm sure. No, this is Ezekiel 36, verse 24. For I will take you from among, from among the heathen and gather you out of all the countries and will bring you into your own land. So why is this written? That the curses were bestowed upon us. One of the curses was that we're going to be uh, scattered to the four corners of the earth. Where we would be uh, uh, serving um, uh, idols made out of wood and stone. So we, as a nation, we be spread among all these other nations. Eventually, lay down with the females of these other nations. You know, our nation started started to be more diverse, also looking like the nations. The Most High is saying here, "I'm going to bring you back. I'm going to put you back into your own land." You know, which is going to happen in a way how which I come back. Precept. Precept. This is uh, Jeremiah 12, verse 9. My inheritance is unto me as a speckled bird. The birds round about are against her. Come ye, assemble all the trees of the field. Come to devour. John, so this scripture shows you that the heritage of the heavenly father is a speckled bird. If you, look at, if you look at a speckled bird, you can see it has all kinds of colors. Resembles our nation in this day and age. Come in all shapes, colors, you know, flavors, mm -hmm. you know. As the brothers, uh, uh, Bashar, he started the, the lesson with, you know, that we were scattered among the nations. Then she spoke about me looking like an Edomite man. You know, he, he was even doubting, like, is he, is he not a spirit I'm here teaching and, and, and giving you this lesson as well? You know, showing you that, that our people. Hey, they come in all kinds of shapes, colors, varieties. It, it, it's no longer the uh, black only Israelites. No man, we the Hebrew Israelites. That's right. So color is not a definition of who we are. That's what the song was supporting here. So those black Hebrew Israelites again. You know, we're not black Hebrew Israelites. We're, the, we're just a Hebrew Israelite. Uh, but they push that in the forefront to make it seem uh, racist and, uh, you know, anti-Semitic and stuff like that. So the spirit, you know, he starts finding out that, indeed, we, we also look like these the nations. But who did who did they learn that from? You know, starting off with the other apostle, Great Millstone, on down. So even these the nations are learning things from us. You know, they're getting wiser, getting sharper, going through the scripture, trying to battle us. This way, I will get them alone. We'll fade off anyways. Can I say something? Yeah, that's why you see uh, yesterday I was looking through lessons. The Christians are using a lot of doctrine from my GMS nowadays. The Christians now, they are reading uh, the scriptures and you, 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 and you listen and you be, hey man, this is how the apostles broke the things down, man. And that is what they're doing. They observe and watch in the GMS, man. They need to because they're all, otherwise they're being confounded. So they, they're going to try to find ways to better love. You know? That's right. Yeah, I had a precept uh, regarding the kingdom. Uh, this is uh, the, uh, the wisdom of Solomon, uh, chapter 5. Uh, I'm start with uh, 16. Therefore shall uh, they receive a glorious kingdom and a beautiful crown from the Lord's hand. For with his right hand shall he cover them, and with his arm shall he protect them. A little bit higher? Yeah, because I think... Yeah, uh, yeah I, I had to start with 15. Uh, but the righteous live forevermore. Their reward also is with the Lord, and the care of them is with the Most High. Therefore, can, therefore, uh, therefore shall they receive a glorious kingdom and a beautiful crown from the Lord's hand. 
for with his right hand shall he cover them, and with his arm shall he protect them. Yes, nation, they're supposed to be the righteous, you know, but this is uh, first and foremost going into the elect, you know, and, and, and the Most High says that we're going to live forever more, you know, we're going we're gonna to be those first fruits, first being cleaned up and getting their reward in the heavenly Father. It also says that the care of them is, is, is with the Most High. The Most High cares for us, man. He's protecting us and trying, trying to keep us safe all the way to all the things that, you know, need to come to pass, you know, in the near future, man. The time of Jacob's trouble. Um, and by us enduring all these things, you know, we're going to receive the glorious kingdom and the beautiful crown. You know, he that endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Um, yeah, man. So, a bit further? Of course. <laughs> of course. Uh, he shall take uh, to him his jealous jealousy for a complete armor and make the creature his weapon for revenge of his enemies. What you hear when I put this precept? Or not? Huh? What you hear when I put this precept as well? Today? He wasn't here yet. Nay, I, I, I wasn't here, no. I, I wasn't here. That's a spirit. <laughs> That's a spirit. So, I already spoke about it, but most of going to turn us into weapons, man. We're going to uh -huh. we're gonna lay vengeance upon these heathens for what they did to us, you know? And part of that is receiving the third power, you know, being changed, being beamed up in the chariot, coming down to that, that judgment upon the heathens and put them in chains, you know? Beautiful, man. Yeah. Ezekiel 36 verse 25. Then will I sprinkle, then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean. For from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. The most high is gonna clean us up, it's going to make us perfect again. Verse 26. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. So, as I explained earlier, you know, right now we need to go to the scriptures in order to find out what we need to do to be righteous. You know, to the best of our ability to guide the Heavenly Father. You know, he's going to do away with that, and he's going to give us that spirit, you know, which is the lost of the commandments, put them in our inward heart, uh, inward, inward parts, part. Salakia, yeah. and... Um, going to do it with the stone yard, and then we're going to receive it by the flesh. The tablets, yeah, I mean, the Ten Commandments were, uh, were written on uh, the tablets. Sign it. Tables. Tables, yeah, which, which were broken. Our and, tablets, but yeah, tables. Yeah. Inside joke, have a cook. <laughs> plain upon make tables. Plain make upon it paid plain upon tables. Ezekiel 36, verse 27. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and ye shall keep my judgment and do them. See? So, Moses is going to give us the last of commandments, put them in us, We're not going to be able to sin no more. You know, sin are the wages, it's the wages of death. And you, and you know, that's, everything. That's just the wages of sin, right? Sin is, sin is the wages of death. Wages death. of death. Sin, you can die. Yeah. But now you are shy. You died for us. So the wages of sin is not death. You see? This is, uh, as the brother was speaking about how we are going to perfectly uh, keep the commandments. And what is that? What is that when you perfectly keep the commandments? Then you're righteous. You know, that's righteousness. So this is. Uh, uh, the wisdom of Solomon 1 verse 15. For righteousness is immortal. And then I jump to uh, wisdom of Solomon 2 verse 23. For Yahweh Basham Yahushai created man to be immortal and made him to be an image of his own eternity. And that shows you also Adam was created to be immortal because he was created, uh, he was walking in righteousness. That's why he was naked. He was naive mm -hmm. to wickedness. Mm -hmm. So he lived, he, he, he was able to, uh, he was immortal at that time. Mm -hmm. But when did he die? When he sinned. Mm -hmm. You see? So that is when death came into the world. Now, I have Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. 
Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life unto those that find them and health to their flesh. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Like the age of Islam, I guess why Tusla gives 669 years because he tried to keep those things that were told him the best of his ability. But eventually, these laws and commandments that made him forget them, you know, eventually, he became less old, you know, to the ages. Those things which were in the scriptures, and he couldn't improve his life. You know, he went away with all the abominations, you know, he scared things up. You know, eventually, people are going to live longer because if you eat pork, man, our people, if they eat pork, they get high blood pressure, die early because of that. Worms, worms. Mm -hmm. you know? So, doing those things that are written in the scriptures, you approach your life, man, eventually, you need to live longer back in the days. Yeah, but the reason I put this is because. Uh, we are going to have a fleshly heart, meaning we are not going to sin. It equals what? Immortality. Because, because sinning brings death. But we are not going to sin. So keeping the ways of Yahweh Hashem Yahshua and them are the issues of life. That's why we're going to be immortal in the kingdom. See? No sinning means no death. Mm -hmm. Understand? That's right. That's why Adam also uh, was immortal. Because he didn't sin yet. Mm -hmm. When he sinned, then he had to die. And everyone that comes after, after it was given those, uh, was made in the image and of power. Order, also the commandments. It's the second half of the third chapter. The second answer is three, verse four. O Yahweh, the rule, thou speakest, like thou speakest at the beginning, when thou didst plant the earth, and then thyself alone, and commandest the people, and gave us a body unto Adam without soul, which was the workmanship of thine hands, and didst breathe into him the breath of life, and he was made a living. He was made living before thee. So in the breath of life, which is the blood of the devil, that body that was given that. No. This is uh, verse 6. And thou let us him into paradise, which thy right hand hath planted. Trades of Rachel, the 19th and 19th already. Second Ezra is 3. Verse 6, and thou ledest him into paradise with which thy right hand had planted before ever the earth came like forward. And unto him thou gavest commandment to love thy way, which he transgressed, and immediately thou appointed death in him and in his generations, of whom came nations, uh, tribes, people, and kindred out of number. There's being said in the second Ethos 3 and uh, 7, you know, that Adam was commanded to love the way to the Heavenly Father. You know, what does it say to love the Most High, keep his commandments? Yep. It's in John chapter, uh, John chapter 14, verse uh, 14, verse 7. Can I read this? Sirach 19 and 19. The knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life. And they that do do things that please him shall receive the fruit of the tree of immortality. Oh, powerful. So in the kingdom, we're going to do exactly what the most High pleases because we are not going to be able to do anything that's wicked. We're going to have understanding of wickedness and evil things because we're going to be judges, perfect judges in the earth. Like it says, the saints shall judge the earth. So we're going to have the knowledge, but we are not going to uh, do those things. So we're going to eat of the tr tree of the, um, uh, uh, of, uh, we're going to eat of the fruit of the tree of immortality. So we're going to become immortal. Okay. In uh, Dragon Ball, you have a movie of Dragon Ball. Um, 
evil, you have this evil Goku, and he has this fruit. Mm -hmm. And he eats it, and he also uh, you know, gets stronger. Basically, that's that's what it made me think of, man. But you shall eat the fruit thereof, meaning you're going to reap the benefits of immortality if you do the things that are pertained unto me. That's why we are walking towards that immortality. We are on that path towards immortality because we try, we're doing now what we're supposed to do for Yahweh Bashem So we're going to reap the fruit of it. Okay? So, uh, as I was speaking about in Second Ezra, you know, unto Adam was given the commandments to love the way of the Heavenly Father. If you go to John chapter 14 and verse 15, it says, If you love me, my commandments, it shows you that Adam was given the love that we give him to the Heavenly Father. Yeah, it is not a police helicopter. It is. Do you have a Yeah, declare. Yeah. That's also the Jupiter Legacy, right? Yeah, Jupiter, right. Jupiter Legacy. When they come down, right. that's the part that I see. Uh, right. 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 Yeah. yeah. They come from that island and you see them descending. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah. You saw, you saw also that uh, one of these. This super guy, uh, his, his name was Barnabas. Yeah, man. <laughs> you see the, the thing that I said to you about the, the, the free state jokes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, the Jake is called Moses. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then the Edomite asked him, where you get that name from? He said, I named myself that. I want to name mm -hmm. Why is that? They show you, they show you, things. yeah, man. And that's what sometimes makes me angry. Like, these devils <laughs> play too much, yeah, yeah, yeah. They they take advantage of the ignorance of Jake, mm -hmm. that's oh, what, yeah, yeah, you know. But he, that man, had like that spirit, like Moses did great things, mm -hmm. and want to be like him because he, he is part of him, yeah. like his nation. But he said, uh, Are you a nigga? He said, No. Free man. Free man, yeah. Because no one owns anybody. Nobody is supposed to take away your, your freedom. So, you know, going into a... You got to steal it a man. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to steal a man. Not even me. Jake, that is the law of Jake. Jake is not allowed to steal a man. No, it's true. 
that comes to us also. Like, uh, what was it? Seven years, if you have a servant? Yeah. Yeah, the year of Jubilee time. Mm-hmm. Is the battery uh maybe you clicked on it? Finish it up and Extra long. <laughs> yeah. But you see, the screen is already gone. Okay, okay, okay. Let me just go to it. This is the uh, pursuit. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from from Yahweh, Basham Yahushai, out of heaven, prepared as a bride or adorned for her husband. God. So, as he was explaining uh, in this uh, Netflix series, saw that the people were ascending. That's how we are going to be descending to Lakia. We are going to be descending from the chariots, you know, because the chariots, the chariots, the chariots are going to, oh, yes, the yeah. chariots are going to shield us from the destruction that's going to come, you know, and afterwards we're going to have that extraterrestrial body as we were explaining about that, that the no corruption can inherit incorruption. So we have to be changed when we come back, then we're going to be ultra, ultra instinct or something. Ultra instinct, yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, ultra instinct is auto automatically moved and be able to dodge things. So everything oh, is going to go automatically. You know, righteousness, keeping the laws, you know, the strength, power that we're going to have. Everything is going to be automatic. And these females are going to come automatically too, man. Yeah. 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 You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? This is uh, Second uh, Maccabees 5 and 19. Nevertheless, Yahweh did not choose the people for the <laughs> yeah. place's sake. But the place for the people's sake. So when you read about that, you saw New Jerusalem coming down. It <laughs> refers to a people because it was first a people and then it, it became a place. So yeah, with that, yeah, we hope it was edifying, and we want to say all praises, honor, and glory go to Yahweh, Yahushai, Masham Rakakodash, Masham Rakakodash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Mills for completion of the school and the rule well. Citations unto the active that is treasure on the four corners of the earth. Study this word and sincerity that is true. Shalom.